Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wrong to Strong Chicago. Uh, my name is Omar Calvillo, uh, and um, tonight I have a special guest. His name is Andre Rodriguez, uh, and I'd like to welcome him to our podcast. I think thanks for for being on here tonight, brother. Uh, thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, and uh, Andre actually brought his uh, son. He's behind the scenes over there on the camera, you know, doing little videos sh shooting. Yeah, 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 that's my right hand man. That's yeah. my my producer right there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you you want to maybe share a little bit of what you guys are doing? You know. Yeah. So we're getting some footage for uh, uh, for just kind of document the work we're doing right now. Uh, I believe God got big things in store for us in the future. So we're just trying to capture, you know, the journey, and you know, that's kind of you know why we're we're gonna we're gonna have the cameras rolling a little more than usual even though we have the cameras rolling a lot because of what we do. But now, you know, there's a different purpose for why we're doing it. So that's kind of uh, what we're doing right now with the cameras. I'm trying okay. to capture this conversation, you know, start of the journey, you know. All right. Now, thanks for doing that. I was, I was telling my brother earlier that my wife tells me that I got a face for radio only. So this is the first <laughs> time we're doing this, you know, doing some video. But, oh, man, th th thanks for coming and doing this. Uh, hey, hey, Andrew, you, you, you want to tell us uh, what part of Chicago you grew up in? Uh, maybe what was the name of that neighborhood and... Maybe if you could paint a picture of that neighborhood, you know, for people that are not from the city. Yeah, so, you know, I'm 45 years old, bro. So I grew up, you know, basically like in the 80s and the 90s was the majority of my youth. And I grew up in Pilsen, 18th Street, uh, North Lawndale, 18th to California. I went to high school with Roberto Clemente in Humboldt Park. Uh, so I got a, a few different uh, experience, life experience from different neighborhoods in, in, in the city, which just so happened to be like some historical neighborhoods in the city as well. Right, yeah, yeah, the, definitely. The ones you mentioned, you know, they, they do have some history. Uh, but, you, you know, okay, you want to take us back maybe, like, to your early uh, age, like, what neighborhood you grew up in, and uh, maybe, maybe if you could share how were things at home. Like, was mom and dad in the picture when you were growing up? Yeah, so, you know, uh, I, I grew up in Pilsen on 18th Street, like, by 18th and Laughlin, uh, from, you know, from the time I was born to, like, maybe I was 12, 13 years old. And we moved a little bit west to Pilsen on the other side of Damon. But, you know, I think it was typical family structure back then compared to, like, what was around me, my environment. You know, my, I got, my parents are, you know, uh, came here from Mexico. So I'm first generation, born, you know, born here. And, you know, both of them working class, always at work, come home dead tired, just resting up for the next day. Right. So, you know, as a young kid, that meant, like, you had a lot of free reign, you know, so running around the streets and just, you know, absorbing the environment, just seeing what's going on and paying attention to everything that was going on in the streets, uh, all the creative stuff and all, the, like, the stuff that wasn't as positive as well was a big influence on, you know, how I was living back then. Okay. You, you know, could you, could you share maybe with the creative stuff? Like, what do you mean by that? Like, uh... Man, so in the 80s, bro, like, you know, breakdancing and hip hop was like a new thing. And it hit, it hit it hit the neighborhood, you know, and Chicago always been a house music town as well. Right. So the breakdancing kind of went hand in hand with it. And I loved it, bro. It was just like, I just loved everything about it. The dancing, the music, the lyrics, the, you know, the clothes. Uh, it just felt like you can express yourself and be like original as an individual. And, you know, I just loved everything about it, bro. It's just something that just like captured me. Right. Did you ever uh, get involved as far as the music, maybe for DJ? Sure. Yeah, what, yeah, what, what, for what, sure. What, what kind was, of stuff were you doing? Like, we was break dancing, bro. Oh, yeah. Like okay. we were break dancing and uh, I wish I could be a DJ. Cause <laughs> you know, I was watching a D there was one guy on the block that had turntables, bro. Okay. And like back then, you know, turntables were expensive yeah, and, you know, you know, you couldn't just... Those are techniques or... Yeah, yeah, some techniques, yep. So he had some there and and he would let a couple of the older guys come to, you know, come to his house. They'd be in the living room with the big speakers, just mixing. And, yeah. you know, I was too little to, to touch them. I couldn't touch them. You know, they're like, hey, stay away. Like, you know, you're going to mess something up over here. <laughs> and so, but I remember just thinking like, man, that's like super cool. You know, you get to take the best parts of the song and mix them together and... So even though I wasn't able to touch the turntables, in my mind, I was mixing, you know, gotcha. like, so I'd go home and get my, like, double cassette uh, tape recorder and, you know, get my mom's, like, bookies, Los Bookies <laughs> cassette and put the, like, little, the little paper in the yeah, thing yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can record over yeah, them yeah. And, 
and just like be recording music off the radio, all my favorite songs. And then I'd go get another cassette and kind of like put my own little mixtape together back then, just, you know, mixing and, and kind of like in my way, you know? Right, right. And that's what I would you're, you're the second guy that's been on here. Uh, I had a uh, my uh, 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 man, Pastor Juan. Mm-hmm. He told me that he used to record off like three cassette players and then to <laughs> one. And like, man, how do, how do you do that? But hey. Yeah, when yeah. you didn't have the double cassette, you yeah. act like actually have the two the two tape players in front of each other recording and <laughs> so you just you know you made it happen right, however right. you needed to yeah hey man you know hey, hey, hey if there's a will there's a way yeah. right <laughs> all right so so that was a creative side now now back then like pilsen was pr- pretty wild you you want to share maybe some of your experiences maybe out there like in the street you know yeah the gang culture was heavy man heavy like it was part of the environment and it was part of the community uh so it wasn't really in in my eyes at that age, and even the way people in my house looked at it, like we didn't look at the gang members like as bad guys, you know, like that was just they're part of the neighborhood. Uh, you know, I remember they used to hang out in front of my house, like on my doorsteps. It'd be like ten of them on my doorsteps, but we never felt like intimidated. We never felt scared. Like they were respectful. We come in, like they move out the way, and you know, we get groceries out the car. They'd help and stuff like that. So that's why it never, I never looked at it like as a negative. Right. It, again, it, it was like, it influenced me. I remember back then it was like, uh, it was the Latin counts over there. And they used to all be wearing their black and red with, the, you know, their Chuck Taylors. And I thought it was cool, like a club. I was yeah. like, man, I want some red Chucks too, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's the, it, it did have an influence on me. And I remember like, I used to have like, wearing my hat to the side. I didn't even know what I was doing. I yeah. just put my hat to the side. And I remember, I remember one time one of the older guys like, hey, little shorty, come here, man. Let me teach you something. Like, man, look, if you wear it like this, it means this. If you wear it like this, it means that. And over here, we wear it like this, all right? So you cool wearing it like this or like this? And I was like, all right, cool. Like, I didn't know, you know? Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't, like, he wasn't saying it in an intimidating way. He was just, like, telling me what the, what the hat yeah. what to the side meant, you know? Yeah, no, in Chicago, you know, I remember with me was the the, the Chuck Taylors, the Converse. And I remember I had like some, uh, they were like a greenish blue. And I, I think I was out there by Taylor somewhere. And I, I didn't know I was a kid, you know, maybe, yeah. I don't know, 10, 11. Tell me about the flaps up or flaps, the flaps down. Flaps down, flaps up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 flaps, what, what, you want to share what that means out here? like? Yeah, so the, the Chuck Taylors got a five-point star, you know. So the fin is like people... And the six point star was full, so it's like with the flaps down, you're covering up that star. Right. And then people even used to write on them with the marker because they were like made out of canvas. Yeah. And with the flaps up, it's like you know you you want to, you want people to see the star, so it's most likely like you were people, you know. Right, so right. It, it like all that stuff meant something. Yeah. So it was yeah it was it was definitely a different a different time, man. And and that shoe specifically it was definitely like iconic in the yeah. city. Yeah, definitely. I remember I used to go get mine by K's over there in California. What was it? Cermak, right? They, uh, they used to have the bootleg ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, the, hey, the line hey, used to be a little hey, bit crooked sometimes. Hey, man. I remember those, man. You used to have, used to, have to keep them nice and clean, the man. The white wall. Yeah. You got to keep the white wall clean. Yeah. A little spray, a little brush, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyways, yeah, okay. Like, uh, I know you mentioned the creativity, you know, the gangs around the neighborhood. Did you ever find yourself drawn into that light lifestyle, like, uh, when you were young? Uh, not really man because i never felt like again i was there's always this false narrative man and i okay. hate when you know politicians use it uh sometimes the police use it unfortunately sometimes even like pastors churches use it that you know you're being recruited uh the gangs are out here recruiting and i never seen that i never seen nobody get recruited everybody that was involved you know in that type of lifestyle you know they volunteered for it and okay. of their own will and obviously, they were welcoming whoever wanted to be a part of it. But I never felt like uh, I never felt like I had to be a part of it, uh, especially with, at that age. So I, I was never like drawn to it, especially because I like going everywhere. You okay. know, when we're a kid, especially when we're doing like the break dancing, or even a little bit later when it was, was like hip house, uh, we'd like to go to like the whole neighborhood, and we had like a little group of guys that. You know, we're we're a neutron. We could walk everywhere. We'd yeah. walk all the way from Devork Park all the way to Harrison Park. And, like, in the same day, we'd just be walking all over the neighborhood, you know, going to say what's up to our friends, going to different parks and 
different parties and being able just to go anywhere. Right. And I always looked at like being in the gang, you like kind of limiting yourself and yeah. putting yourself in a box. So it never really like interests me then. Right. Yeah. No, you're, you're right about that because sometimes I'll think back and I picture my life like zoomed out. Like let's say a satellite looking at my yeah, life. And yeah, now yeah. just going in a circle. Like only certain areas that you could drive in. Yeah. Now I look at it, man, what a waste of my life, man, to For only sure. be be limited. Yeah, yeah. You know? And now you you mentioned the Borg Park. I remember we used to go over there. I don't know if you remember it was like a T crew over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we used to go party over there all the time, yeah. man. From I, I used to go to Juarez. So I remember we used to, you know, when they pulled a uh, Fire alarm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you yeah. go out and, the man. Daytime you, parties. Yeah. <laughs> so there were some classics yeah. over there, man. Yeah. And, uh, the Borg Park. But, uh, okay, so anyways, you, you, you're growing up out there. Uh, you, you mentioned, did you go to Juarez or you said uh, Clemente? I went to Juarez for one year. Okay. And, you know, like, uh, I didn't do it. I, like, I didn't really do nothing there. And I ended up going, you know, my, I had a brother that lived in Los Angeles. So I ended up going to L.A., and I was over there for like half a year and I was like, man, send me back. Like, this ain't it over here. This is just way different, bro. Like, everything slow motion over here. You can't really walk nowhere like you can in the city. Everything so far, like, you need a car. And at the time, I was like, maybe, what, 14, 15? So, if, you know, I really didn't have no friends over there. The weather was cool, you know, like, the scenery was nice, but it wasn't home, you know? Okay. And they're telling me, like, I talk funny, and I'm telling them they talk funny. And they're over here, like, all interested in my clothes. Like, damn, man, like, where'd you buy that? And I was like, well, how about it at Jewtown? Like, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, Jewtown? <laughs> like, what's that? You know? <laughs> so, uh, they're, you know, I remember them telling me, like, hey, if I give you some money, you think you can have some people send me some clothes over here? Like, this is obviously before the internet and all that. Okay, but, right, 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 know, Amazon. <laughs> I, st I stood out over there, you okay. know? Yeah, so, and, and uh yeah, so it wasn't, you know, I, I was like, uh, I wanted to come home. Chicago was home. Right. Yep. Okay, so you came back and then uh, got Clemente from there, you went? Yeah, I went back to Clemente. Yeah. I tried to go back to Juarez, but the principal was like, nah, you can't come back here. <laughs> so I ended up going to Clemente and, and you know, just growing up in Pilsen is predominantly just Mexican. Right. You know, there's one or two Puerto Ricans in the neighborhood, but uh, going over there was like the reversal. Okay. You know, it's a much uh, predominantly Puerto Rican neighborhood. So that was like, uh, the culture was different. Right. Which I loved. Again, I loved it because I, I kind of always felt like it was boring just to be around people that only look like you. Like I wanted to meet like different kinds of people all the time, you know, see, you know, what they're into, what their culture is like or whatever. And it was, it was cool. I liked it. Right. Yep. You, you, you want to talk a little bit about that with like, there's like a tension though, right? Like uh, oh, between Mexicans and Puerto Rican. So, 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 what was your experience like? You know, like for sure. So, like obviously, if, if you like, if you look at me, I'm a little bit light skinned right? And some people can't tell right off the bat that I'm Mexican. So I would hear the comments because they wouldn't know I was Mexican. <laughs> so I would hear like the comments. They, they, you know, they're talking crazy about Mexicans, and I'm just looking I'm like, damn, for real, like what? Like what's going on? But you start busting on them too. <laughs> no, nah, I was just I was outnumbered. I was outnumbered. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> no, nah, but it was it was it was weird because I was like, damn, there really is like a tension here. Uh, and, and the funny part was, I always got this story about like the girls used to be on that too, the females, right? And they used to be talking crazy about Mexicans and stuff like that. And here, like, oh, I never date a Mexican. This, that, and the other. So I end up dating them, and we end up like being together for you know a few weeks. And then I'd be like, hey, uh, I thought you said you'd never be with a Mexican, right? Like, yeah, what do, you, what do you mean? I wouldn't. I'm like, you've been with one the last two weeks. <laughs> and then they'll be like, you're lying. Talk to me in Spanish. Let me see. And I'll okay. talk to them in Spanish. And they'll be like, oh, <laughs> damn. Like, <laughs> There you go. So that was funny. Yeah. Was a little payback in a sense. Yeah, yeah, way. yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, are there any, like, memories from the sign period that say the end of that, that are, like, still in your mind? Things like yeah, that maybe that happened during this time period that... Like, man, I'm never going to forget this. Or or that could paint a picture of your, or, or, or like the way you grew up in Chicago, I guess, in a sense. Yeah, so around that time, man, it's kind of where, like, I started gravitating to, more towards, like, the gang culture. Because uh, it kind of felt like that's where I fit in for some reason. You know, it just, like, uh, it seemed like they they weren't, nobody was, like, going to intimidate them. Nobody was really going to tell them what to do. And, you know, there was there was a lot of dudes on the street 
that you know like did pray on the week you know or pray and weak by meaning like you don't have no backup right and i used to hate seeing that like or like you know that guy's nothing bro like why you bothering him like you see him in the neighborhood all the time bro like why you bothering him just because you can and i remember seeing there was a lot of guys from where i was living at at the time that used to kind of be on that so then i was like yeah we ain't, like that's not gonna happen and because if that happens to me like i'm not just gonna be quiet but I was always kind of like, I like to think of myself like I've always been like a thinker. Okay. <laughs> so I was just like, well, you know, if that happens, I'm not going to let that fly. And I'm going to react. And even if I get the upper hand then, the backlash back then would have been, it wouldn't have been good. So I was like, that wouldn't, that's not going to be a smart move. But I see like, it's real probable that something like that is just, it's a matter of time before it happens. Right. You know, uh. So I was just like, you know what? Uh, there were some guys on the next, on the next block over, uh, that I was cool with, and there were, you know, there were SDs, and and I lived in the SD neighborhood, but where I lived at was Oakley, and then the SDs on Cal were like, there were SDs too, but there was like, it's like two different gangs almost. Yeah, yeah. But, it's, it's, it's funny because same gang but like almost like a different culture right or, yeah on that side yeah yeah for sure because it's more it was more mixed over there right. it was more like you had everything mexicans blacks puerto ricans it was like kind of like where pilsen and north lawndale meet and you know again i liked it it was different I, it was different you know culture and what i like the most about it is that none of the guys in oakley gonna just come and push me around because now they can't you know right. they'll get like they'll get disciplined back then. Oh know? yeah, yeah, right? right. So, uh, so that's kind of like how I ended up just getting involved in gangs. But even even when I was like, a, like a member, I was never, I wasn't out here just trying to hurt people for no reason. Right. You know, I wasn't over here just kind of like on some gang banging stuff. You know, like I was still just like it was almost like a strategic move. You know what okay. I'm saying? It was just in like. I'm just like, I'm just down for the mob and I'm just going to crash out. And if I see a king, it's on sight. And I used to see kings in, in traffic and the guys would just be like in my car, like, oh, look, 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 look. I'm like, bro, we going over here. They're going over there. As long as they don't come this way, it's right, cool. Right, right. You know, like you want to do some goofy stuff, do it when you're in your car. You know, don't do it in, in my car. So, and for the most part, like they respected it because they right. knew, they knew it wasn't because I was scared. Right. Um, cause there was some times where like, we we're kind of cornered and they seen, they seen kind of like how we got down. So right. they already know, like, you know, drain, he ain't scared. Yeah. Yeah. He just don't want no trouble. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, right, so, right. so they already kind of knew already, uh, after a while they knew, they knew kind of like what to expect if they're going to be around where I'm around, you gotcha. know, if they were my guys, cause right. I, I, I feel like I had the right to kind of dictate like what the environment is supposed to be like. Like we're we're gonna protect ourselves to the fullest, but we ain't out here just like on some predator shit. You know, okay. like we're just you know, we're just out here. It's Chicago, bro. It's yeah. dangerous. You gotta oh, yeah, yeah. you gotta be you know vigilant and and you know be ready because just because you're on that you know you might run into somebody that that's what they're on. They're just yeah. trying to hurt you, so you gotta be ready for that as well. Uh, so yeah, man, it was it was so it was that that time period for me where. I was just kind of getting like involved in the street. When I was, I think I was 15 years old, uh, I ended up catching like two attempt murders and I ended up going like going to the Audi home and, and uh, luckily nobody died. Okay. And what do you call it? It was, like I said, bro, Chicago was different back then. Like it was a lot of, a lot of stuff was kind of like handled on the street. Right. You know, even like uh, the consequences, you you didn't want nobody going to jail, even if it was your ops, like you wanted to handle that. So the guys that, that I shot, they went to court a few times and then they stopped going. Okay. It's like they went just to see my face and to see who I was because they wanted to catch me on the street. Yeah, yeah. And so they stopped going. When they stopped going to court, they had to drop those charges. And that was my first case. I was 15 years old, so I ended up just getting probation for the guns. 
because I got caught. Like, I did it in front of the cops, bro. Like, the cops were, like, hidden somewhere, and they seen the whole thing happen, and Man. it was crazy. Yeah, so. Did they grab you right away? Like, right away, yeah. We got in a high-speed chase. We're in a stolen car, and we ended up crashing, and we got caught. And, and yeah, so I caught a blessing, bro, for real. First of all, that nobody got killed, you know? Right. And, and then, again, like, these guys decided, like, not to go to court, and so. They let me out in a few months. When they dropped the charge, they just gave me like a couple years probation. Uh, and so now it was like, now I'm like this 15-year-old in the neighborhood, but I'm not like a typical 15-year-old. The older guys like, no, like, right. like leave him alone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, don't bother him. He ain't bothering nobody. And, you know, he going to take care of his business if, if he has to. And the, and the reason I even did that the night before I was on the pay phone. You know, back then they had the pay yeah, phone. Yeah, right. I was answering the page off my pager because <laughs> I was out there hustling. Right. And uh, I was on the pay phone and these dudes, like, they came out of alley, bro. Two dudes in ski masks and just, like, they aired me out. You know, like, they aired me out. Like, they, that shit, that, it was, felt like, everything felt like it was in slow motion, but it felt like it took, like, half an hour. It probably took, like, 30 seconds, but it felt like it was a half right, an hour right. and I could literally, like, hear the, Bullets whistling past me, bro, smacking the steel off the street pole, you know, hitting the car like that I dove behind. And and uh, after, like, the fear wore off, like, I just had, like, a rage, bro. Like, yeah. these dudes just try to take my life, and and I know who they are. Oh, yeah? So, like, I know where they came from, you know, because only these them dudes come out of that alley. Gotcha. So, uh, so I went back the next day, and that's when I got caught. So again, it wasn't just because I like let's just go over there and shoot right, at right. somebody. I feel like you know, uh, I needed some payback, you know. But I was 15 years old, bro. You know, doing some dumb stuff, and yeah. But uh, at the time, I thought it was like righteous. But looking back at it, it, was just like it was stupid, you know. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely paints a picture of how things were over there, man. That's yeah. Yeah. That's way out, and like you mentioned, man. A lot of times it's like that anger, that rage, man. Like you almost took my life, like man, and. The mentality back then. You want to talk about your mentality back then? Like, how did you view those things? I mean. I yeah, I mean, I just felt like. Like, you had to let people know they can't get away with certain stuff. Because uh, the streets, like, were so aggressive. And even, I think now still, bro, like. Like I said, people prey on weakness. Right. Right. So. Like, it, I just always feel like, man, I always feel like you're going to avoid problems by handling things. Like, if you handle that situation, that might have prevented 10 more situations because now they know, like, how you handled that last situation. Right. And it was messed up, but that was my mind state back right. then. Like, anybody that plays with me, I got to let them know you can't play with me. You know, uh, go play with somebody else. Yeah. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know... Uh, like I said, I, I never felt like I was the one looking for trouble. There was a lot of times, bro, like where we, like I said, we'd be in traffic, and you know, I'd have a gun in the car, and we'd be some see somebody from like a rival gang in traffic, and I got my homie with me. He's all excited, like, "Oh, we got one, we got yeah, one." Yeah. I'm like, "Man, sit your ass down, bro. Like, we ain't got nothing." You know what I'm saying? Like, because I had already, I, I went to jail at yeah, 15, yeah, yeah. so I felt like I, like I caught a blessing, so right. I thought about it more. Yeah. You know, so I was like, nah, bro, like, no. There's always the chance that we can go to jail for this. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, nah, like, our life is not in danger. You know, we can make a left turn right here and every, we go about our day. Yeah, yeah. Or we could do it, go do something stupid and the, probably the rest of our life could change. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I was I was always like, uh, uh, like a, a balance I was always trying yeah. to keep. You know, I always, but I... I always first and foremost like try to avoid situations. Yeah, I yeah. was never like you no know, tough guy. Like I always know that like, there's somebody tougher than you, there's somebody crazier than you, there's yeah. somebody willing to throw their whole life away. And you if like are you ready to match that energy? Yeah. You know? And obviously, like if I didn't have a choice, no. Like a, like if I didn't have a choice, I'm gonna match that energy. Right. But if I got a choice, I'm not gonna I'm cool, bro. Like I'll I'll go this way. Gotcha. Like you won that one, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm like, I got to keep living, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. No, that that that's a good way to to put it, you know. 
as far as like the mindset back then, you know, obviously yeah. it's, it's not like that now. But uh, so so yeah, that, that that so you're like what 16, 17 now around this time. Yeah. So what 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 else do you find yourself getting into, or like I guess as you're getting older, do you still remain there? Does does any anything happen that to change that as far as you being out there, you know? As I got older, you know, I started focusing more on getting money. So I started like hustling and just uh, like I said, I was in high school already, bro. Like you know, I had nice car, nice clothes. Uh, again, in school, even I said I'm, I'm a Clemente pulling up like in a box Chevy with 30 sounds and and I had like a clean Chevy. I didn't have like a you know primered one. You know? Okay, like yeah, 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 right. <laughs> so it was a different. Cause there's some yeah. people that had the you know the Chevy, you but can that, see all the indentations. It, it was barely making it. Like you know they're happy. It's their first yeah. car, but no, I'm pulling up like I got adults looking at my car like trying to buy it off me but you know so i kind of figured out how stuff worked on the street when it came to getting money and i just started like you know making my little moves or whatever and uh i think i was always like mature for my age so the older dudes used to kind of like talk to me like i was one of them okay they ain't never treated me like a shorty uh, because of the way i carried myself and because of what I, the kind of moves I was making out there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that that just kind of started, like, getting more and more serious and right. getting deeper and deeper into that to where eventually, like, when I got into my, like, 20s, I ended up catching a, a Fed case, a drug conspiracy, right. you know, and I ended up doing 10 years in federal prison uh, for that. Yep. Man, you, 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 you want to share, like, how that happened? Maybe, like, Right before they grabbed you, did you know that you were being watched or they just happened out of nowhere or? Yeah, so uh, I did know. I did know I was being watched uh, because of uh, some things that were happening around me. Uh, they tried pulling me over one time. So I had been under, under surveillance already for like a few months. I didn't know. They had like tracking devices on my car and right. like you get to like see all your discovery once you're locked up and uh, so they, I would keep losing my my tail, my trail, whoever they had trailing me, because I'm always driving fast. Again, I'm always, and it's crazy because in my mind, when you talk about mindset, when I'm driving, it's like I always used to be practicing just like getting away either from the cops or like from from the ops or some <laughs> swerving. That was that was on a, on, a, on a regular. <laughs> yeah, it was just like gotcha. I was like practice, like never box myself in, and yeah, yeah, you know, just always like hype, looking around. So that's just the way I drove, you know, like. At yellow, at the yellow light, I'm not slowing down. I'm, right, I'm going through, and I'm paying attention to somebody blow the light with me. And oh and, yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. yo. So I'm like watching everything, bro. So, so uh, they couldn't keep up with me without blowing their cover. So that's that's why they had to like get a court order for the tracking devices. So uh, they tried pulling me over once. I had just served somebody, and and I was like, I was on the north side, and I was like in this. In this low key car, bro, a brand new car that I just got out the dealer. You know, no rims, no nothing, no tents. It was low key. And they tried pulling me over, and I was like, nobody knows me over here. Like, why are they pulling me over? I didn't blow a light, nothing. I wasn't speeding, like nothing. And I still had some drugs on me. And right there in the moment, I was just kind of like, I had been through the system so much already. You know, I had prior to that, like, I got caught a bunch of gun cases and. But most of the time I would beat them because I kind of know I know the system now. Like I know okay. the laws and you can't just search my car for no reason, you know. And, you know, they used to do that all the time. Like right. Pull oh, you yeah. over, get you out the car and just search it, illegal search and seizure. So, uh, you know, I would go to the county and, and get charged with with, a, with the gun. And but then, you know, in court, my, my my lawyer will beat it, you know. So I'm already thinking, like, I got these drugs on me. They're going to lock me up for the drugs, but I could beat it. Okay. But I was like, man, it's Saturday. I don't want to have to spend 4000 on a lawyer again. And they're going to impound my car. It's going to be like another 1000 And I'm processing all this as the, like. That's they're, crazy. They're in a narco. So they're walking up to my car. And I put the car in neutral. I didn't put it in park. So I, they could see I let my foot off the brake. When they walked up to the car, they're like, hey, get out the car. And I'm like, what? And they're like, get out the car. And I put it in drive and I took off. I took off on them. I'm driving like on the wrong side of the street. I'm way like way up north, like Addison and Kedzie. And I ditched them. Okay. But then I was like, bro, that's weird. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Right. So I was just like, 
I'm already knowing the kind of stuff we're dealing with. Uh, I just knew it was a matter of time. We're dealing with too many people and we're like moving a lot of weight. So I'm just thinking like it's a matter of time before something bad happens. Right. Uh, so I was just like, but maybe I'm just being paranoid. Maybe it's just regular cops that who knows what the, what the hell they seen. And I'm just overthinking. So like a month later, uh, I'm leaving like a stash house that nobody knows about. Nobody. None of my friends, nothing. And I'm leaving. I got some work in a book bag. And as I'm driving on the side, on the side street, like northwest side of the, uh, the city, like complete opposite area from where I'm from, uh, a narc car hits the lights behind me. And I'm like, shit, this got to be the feds. So then the car goes around me, and it was a blizzard. It was snowing real hard. He goes around me, and I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, he's going on another car. But there was another car behind him, and this uh, the, the cop car, like, blocked me in. Right. Because I, I guess they know, like, last time I took off on him. <laughs> <laughs> so this time, you know, I'm in the same car, the new car. They, they blocked me in, but he left me, like, a little gap. So I just, like, ran my way through it because I had, like, I had like five bricks in the bag, bro. Ooh. Like, so I was just like, I gotta get out of here. Like, I gotta get rid of this. So, you know, I took off and, you know, back then they had the Crown Vicks. Right. It's a lot of snow on the ground. And those are real wheel drive. So okay. they, they like floored it. When they floored it, their whole car spin like in the opposite direction. And I got front wheel drive and like I didn't panic. I, I didn't floor it. I'm right. just like, I'm hitting like boom, boom. Like every time I felt the wheels like yeah, yeah, spin yeah, yeah. out, I let go of the gas. I just I didn't want to lose control. So, you know, in the north side, they got those little cul-de-sacs in the middle. So I was going around them. And when I, once I seen I had enough distance between them, I tossed the bag. So now I'm driving. And as I'm now I'm picking up more speed. And as I'm going around these things, I'm like, I know my car's going to slide. But, like, as long as I don't crash head on, I don't care. Like, I just got to keep going forward. So sure enough, my car starts, like, sliding. I'm banging against cars like a pinball. Like, boom, boom. I go to look at my rear view mirror, bro. It's gone. It's like hanging, like my brand new car, was right. just tearing it up. And I didn't care. I'm like, I just need to get away from that bag. So I ended up like driving like six, seven more blocks. I tried to make a turn. I finally like crashed head on into a parked car. And, you know, I turned and the car just like slid in the snow. So I just jumped out the car, bro, left the car door open. I ran. I hit a bunch of gangways. I like I jumped fences and I ended up being under somebody's gangway. And I text my, I call my homie and I was like, hey, bro, like, I'm, I could see the alley. You know, in Chicago, they got the addresses on the garbage can. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm looking at the garbage can. I'm like, hey, bro, like, come get me. I'm over here. And he's like, all right, I'm on my way. So then I'm just, I'm just waiting for him to come get me. And as I'm waiting, I hear like a bunch of radios, like getting closer and closer. And I hear like a lot of radios, bro, like a lot of police radios. Then I see, like, uh, one of the cops, I see him in the alley. I'm looking at him. He doesn't see me. And then I hear him, like, on the radio. He's like, hey, he got to be around here somewhere. This is the address he gave. And wow. I was like, oh, shit. My phone's tapped. Man. But they didn't know that I heard. Right. So eventually, like, they were going gangway by gangway. Yeah. And they finally found me. They threw me in the back of the car. Uh, they, ain't, they didn't find the bag. Okay. Yeah. It don't matter no more because statute of limitations, like that was, you know, two, okay. that was like 17 years ago. Right, so right, right. <laughs> I learned a lot about the law when I was locked up. <laughs> but, uh, but you, yeah. You, so, said, you said that was your, your book bag with, with, with books. Yeah. From school, books, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so they threw me in the back seat and there, you know, then the, the agents came and they jumped in like an agent, one on each side and, uh, they're like, man, you know, we got you, right? So I'm thinking, like, they had kicked the door in over there at the safe house. Okay. And found everything, bro, because I had, like, 40 or, like forty more over there. Man. You know, like, it was like, oh, man, like, I'm going to be gone for a few decades. Right. And I'm just like, I knew this was a possibility. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? So on my mind, again, I'm already processing, like, I'll be home in 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I was thinking, right, bro. Right, right, right. Uh, they're like, what's up with your homies? And. You know, we got you. You need to help yourself and blah, blah, blah. 
And I like I told him, bro, like, man, look, he's like, you're not gonna talk to us. I'm like, man, the only person I wanna talk to is my lawyer. So they're like, who's your lawyer? And you know, everybody's lawyer back then was Joe Lopez, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so right, so right. I'm like, Joe Lopez. And he's like, oh, good lawyer. I will see you in court. And they right. just they walked out the car. They took me to the police station. They wrote me like three traffic tickets, bro, and they let me go. What? And I was like, I just had the whole Grand and Central chasing me. Right. And they just let me walk out the station. Like, so you already knew. Like, it's the Fed. So now I'm just waiting. That was the last day I sold any type of drugs. Okay. That was the last day. Whatever I had, I gave it away. Right. If you owe me some money, don't worry about it. And I'm telling my homies because they're hitting me up like they need some work. Like, hey, come holler at me, bro. Like, they come. And I told them, like, hey, look, this is the situation. I'm hot, bro. Like, stay away from me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what's going on. I don't, right, know, right. I don't know when they come to get me, bro, but they're on me. You know what I'm saying? And it's pretty much over with. So I waited almost a year, bro, before they came and got me. And I guess they were waiting to see if I kept on making some moves. Again, they didn't know that I heard them. So they right. didn't know that I knew. Gotcha. And so... The way the phone taps work, every 30 days, they got to go in front of the judge and like give them evidence why they need to continue this phone okay. tap. Right, right. So their time was running out, and they were getting like a little desperate. There was this female that I used to serve, and you know she had like a white-collar job. She was a white girl, so they approached her and probably thinking they're going to scare her and be like, hey, look, we know, we know you buy like, large amounts of drugs from from this guy and we know this isn't your lifestyle like you can still like turn your life around and all we need you is to like make a buy from him and and uh and so you can help yourself right out of everybody that i was dealing with at the time bro she was the most gangster one out of everybody because she sent her she sent her friend to come holler at me she like hey, look uh because they told her like don't reach out to him or nothing right, she right. still did and, and her friend told me, look, they approached her. This is what they told her. She just wants you to know, bro, she's whatever. She's going to take her weight. Whatever she got coming, she's going to stand strong. So you ain't got to worry about her, but watch yourself. They're on you. They're trying to get somebody to set you up. Right. So then I knew, like, oh, she, like they're still trying. Yeah, they're oh, still yeah. working. So, you know, fast forward, like, almost a year later, uh, 6 o'clock in the morning, bro, they showed up at my house. This guy was one year, he was a baby, he was a one-year-old, you know, so uh, six o'clock in the morning, he came and grabbed me, and man, I made it home 10 years later. <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. 10 years, so, man, is it straight? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, 10 years straight, yeah. Man, that's yeah. crazy. How, you you want to tell us uh, that experience, like, maybe, I, I know you mentioned being, like, uh, that they grabbed you before, but you were probably in and out of the station. Did you, did, did you ever do any time, like, previously to nah, this? No, bro, I never... I never even made it up to a deck in the county. Okay. You know, I went to the county multiple times, but I always had bond money. Right. And, like, like again, as soon as I got locked up, I got my car and be like, hey, show up to court tomorrow with $5,000. Like, I always tell, that was, like, the number. Just bring 5000 to court. Right. And so I always had bond money, and I always got, you know, I always bonded out. So I never got even the chance to make it up to the county. Like, okay. ever since the Audi home, that was the only time, like, I had to spend some time in jail. But as an adult, I never had to spend... Like a night in the county, I never right. did no state time. Uh, but this time it was different. It was the feds, you know, like, yeah, it ain't that easy. No, right, right. And once they got you, they got they you, got really, me, right? Yeah. And then my lawyer was kind of like, try to fight to give me a bond. And, you know, I asked him, I was like, I'm like, uh, can you beat this case? And he's like, no, nah, I can't beat it. I could just, I could probably try to get you like the, the least amount of time. I'm like, well, if you can't beat it, like, I don't want to bond out. I want to start doing my time already. Okay, right, I right. I want to be out there. Like, I want to hurry up and get home. And yeah, yeah. Just, my mind will start knocking this time out, even though I didn't know that I was going to get that much time, you know, because I ended up getting like a 15 year sentence. Right. Uh, I ended up coming home because, you know, Obama changed the federal drug, oh, yeah? drug sentencing law. So, I came home a few years earlier. Oh no way! Yeah, yeah. I actually have a so somebody else that I knew that that got out right, right around that same time when yeah. Obama changed that. Yeah. Okay, man. No, that's good. So shout out, shout out, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> that's some good stuff he did right yeah, there. Yeah, right? yeah, For yeah. You, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you, you, you want to tell us uh, maybe let, let's say the first few days? How, how was that like, like for you? Like, man, you just went in. What, what was your experience like? I guess if you want to. 
Yeah, first let me tell you. Yeah, go ahead. Let me tell you a little bit before. Uh, before I end up getting locked up, right? So like it was a dark time for me, bro, because you know it's like my whole life was spinning because I didn't know what was gonna happen. How how, how old were you at this time? At this I was point? uh, twenty eight years old. Okay. So, my main source of income was gone, and I had a family I'm supporting. Uh. I don't trust the people around me. I'm already knowing how people think. Like, I could have got, I could have brought a lot of people down with me. Okay. You know? And so I'm already knowing, I'm putting myself in their shoes. Like, you know, like, again, I'm always, I've always been a thinker, sometimes right. overthinking, but I'm like, they might want to play it safe and just get me out the way. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So, and I was just like, should I just beat them to the punch and get them out the way? So it was dark for me, bro. It yeah. was just like I didn't know where to go. And uh, his grandmother uh, ended up inviting me to church, bro. Okay. Like right before Christmas. And uh, and and it was at New Life at Midway. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, 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 what year was this? This oh. was 2000. They had just opened up over there. It was 2005. Okay. Yeah. And then the I don't even remember what the pastor said, but he said something that hit me, bro. And I was like, like I was supposed to hear that. I'll be back next week. So I started going to church. Oh, no way. You know, I was like, I'm lost. Yeah. Like, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. And, you know, I kind of, I grew up, like most people in the neighborhood, like, almost by tradition, you're Catholic, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So they used to force me to go to church and... And so, like, I always knew about God, and, right. like, I believed in God. I just never was, like, into church. So, uh, when I was there, like I said, I just started coming back. Like, I'm lost, bro. I'm just looking for some direction. And uh, so, I'm going. I'm going to church every 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 day. I got my whole family going. And, and uh, then I end up getting picked up. So, then, you know... Even some people in my family, they were like, because I would tell them, bro, you still, like, you got to keep going to church. Keep going to church. Keep okay. praying for me. And they, like, they were. And then after I got sentenced and I got all that time, I was telling them, you still got to keep going. Okay. You still got. And they're like, for what, man? We win. And look, you still got all this time. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like, you got to keep going. Okay. So now I'm just like, in my, like, in my mind, I always knew, like, there's a reason I'm going through all this. Like, there got to be a purpose. Like, what's, because it didn't make any sense to me. Okay. Like, uh, why did he just, why is he letting me, like, go through this and experience this? Why didn't he just, like, let me die? Or, like, uh, I don't know. Like, why didn't yeah. he just, like, save me from this to begin with? And why didn't he wake me up? And it doesn't make any sense, but I trust something. It's, it, it's supposed to mean something. Yes. And, they couldn't, they didn't understand it. And so obviously like now I'm away. And so, uh, like, I'm glad that that happened before I got locked up because I even used to ask myself, like, man, I just started going to church. Like I really was trying to change. Like I wanted to leave who I was behind and, and I got to go through this. Right. So, but I was, again, I, like, I didn't lose faith. I was just like, this is going to mean something one day. Gotcha. I don't know what, but it's going to mean something. So I'm just kind of like, you know, going, uh, it helped me, it helped me a lot, bro. It helped me a lot to get through that whole, those whole 10 years. It would have been rough. Okay. It, it was rough, but it would have been rougher because I, that's what I held on to. And, you know, like I held on to, to that, just to that hope that like, this is going to be, this is going to be something good one day. Like something good is going to come from this. Gotcha. Even though it felt like my life kept continuing to fall apart, even when I was in there, you know, family members, like, uh, just like having personal struggles of their own and can't do nothing. Right. You know, I was married at the time and ended up getting divorced. Obviously, you know, like I'm not, I'm not there no more. Right. And, you know, all of that stuff was like just painful to go through. And it's just like slow motion. You're going through it in slow motion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you can't run from it. You just got to deal with it every day and just kind of like a mental 
almost like a mental, like almost torture sometimes, yeah. especially like, again, I always, I'm, I like to think a lot and that's almost like torture, bro, yeah. because like sometimes I want to stop thinking and I can't and I'm just thinking of everything, just rewinding my whole life, bro. Like yeah. how did I end up, how did I even end up here? Like what could I have done different? Where'd I go wrong? And uh, what move was I, was I supposed to yeah. make? And just thinking like that and then just, it got to the point where I stopped thinking about how I got there and I started thinking about how am I going to move forward? And then that just became like a whole nother thought process, you know, just, I started rebuilding my life in there in, okay. my, in my mind, you know what I'm saying? And in my heart, obviously like, uh, just planning on how I was going to move when I got out. Okay. Not what I was going to do specifically, but the type of person that I needed to be. Gotcha. You know, so and that was that was a challenge, and I always knew like the real test was gonna be when I came home. It's easy to say, you know, right. never gonna do this again. Like it's easy to say that when you don't have the opportunity to do yeah. it. So, uh, and you know, I just kind of like you know uh, navigated those those ten years, bro, and just worked on myself. And uh, again, I kept my faith, bro, and just leaned on it heavy, like super heavy. And uh, that's what, like, I tell people, I don't, I don't push like my beliefs on on nobody that I'm around, but they right. see it. I don't hide it either. Okay, you know. And uh, it's funny because I get it makes them more curious uh, when I go to church on Sunday. And I'll I'll post something right, okay, like, <laughs> and I'll get questions like random. Hey, bro, you be going to church? <laughs> so what is that, bro? Like, what is it like? Right. And I'll be like, you ain't going to like it, bro. It's boring. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what you mean, man? Like, I'm going to go with you one day. Okay. I'm like, all right, man. But look, when I'm going to church, bro, like, that's my time, bro. Don't come to church if you're not going to come to church. Like, <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so almost like, <laughs> almost like on some, like, uh, reverse psychology type yeah, stuff, yeah. you know? Like, I really want them to come, you yes, know? But, yes, sir. But, uh, but, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, you know? Definitely. Okay, so man, you you did your ten years. What, what you, you want to tell us that that first day back, man? How how was that for you? Uh, the first day back, bro, was. You ever seen uh, the movie Planet of the Apes, the one with Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, where like he's he's in the Planet of the Apes and he's fighting to get back to Earth, and then he finally makes it back at the end of the movie, right? And he lands like in Washington D.C. or something. And he gets surrounded, and he's like, "I'm back home." But then he comes back home and it's like, it's still the planet of the apes. Like, it's a different world. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like that, bro. I'm thinking like, I'm finally going to make it back home after all this time. And I get back home, bro, and nothing feels the same. Everything feels different, man. Everybody looks different. Everybody acts different. Even like my family, you know, they were just different people. And... uh. It didn't feel like I got home. It felt like I was still lost. And it was just like a, it was a scary feeling for me because I didn't know, it's like I still didn't know where I was at. Okay. I'm looking around like, you know, my son, he's like 11 now, and but he doesn't really know me. My daughter, you know, she like, she told me straight up like, man, I don't feel comfortable around you. I've been gone 10 years. You know, yeah. yeah, we talked on the phone, but it's different. I can yeah, just oh, pop yeah. up in their life. And, you know, my mom was like mentally was different. My parents had separated while I was gone. Uh, so it was just, you know, it was just, I'm looking at like the woman that used to be my wife. She's not my wife no more. Like everything just felt weird, yeah, bro. Yeah. And it was just, uh, I didn't know what anxiety was, you know, and like I was having like almost like nervous breakdowns. Yeah. And I'm telling them people like, man, I need to go talk to somebody. Like, like I feel like my whole body just wants to shut down. And, yeah. and bro, like they told me like, oh, you don't have no history of like mental illness, so we can't send you to a counselor or nothing. And I was like, bro, like what do you, what do I need to do? Like hurt somebody so I can get some help? Yeah. Like I'm asking you for some help. And again, bro, like I started getting passes to go to church. Okay. So I started going to church. So the halfway house was in Humble Park. And I used to go to, like, I was going to New Life back then, but, so there's a New Life over there. Uh, it's the different one, but it's, like, still New Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started going there, and I ended up 
bumping into one of my friends that I went to high school with at Clemente. Okay. He was there. And uh, I kept bumping into him. I bumped into him at church. And then, like, when it was just like a quick, what's up? Hey, what's up, Dre? Like, man, right, glad right. to see you home. And I'm staying kind of away from everybody because I don't yeah. know who's on what. And right, right. I bumped into him again at the DMV. And he's over there, like, trying to get his license together. Then one day, I'm like, I'm at the barbershop. I bump into him coming out the barbershop. So I keep bumping into him. And by this time, I'm out of the halfway house now. And I'm telling him, like, I kind of want to get into the routine of going to church again. But I don't want to go by myself because it's like I don't really know nobody. Right. So I told him, like, man, I see you be going to church, bro. Like, And he's like, yeah, man. Like, I go all the time. And I'm like, man, I want to go. I just don't want to go by myself. And he's like, bro, come with me. Like, come with me. And I ended up, like, going with him every week. And then, you know, his uh, he was going through a personal situation. Uh, so he was kind of, like, living by himself with his son. He was taking care of his son because his wife was going through some stuff legally. And uh, so it was I was able to come over a lot. Okay. And he was, like, a real positive influence on me at the time because, you know, he's he's into the world. He's giving me a lot of positive feedback, bro. Like, you know how they say, like, he's filling your cup, you know? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that helped, that relationship helped, helped me a lot, bro. Just kind of like getting kind of settled in and getting like even a little bit more calm and, and, uh, and then I ended up meeting the person that's my wife now. And that was like a big game changer. Okay. You know, like I ended up moving in with her and when I moved in with her, you know, her family embraced me, man, treated me like family. And it finally, at that time, it finally felt like, man, I'm home now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because even, even like, my mom was, uh, she was getting, she like, she was in foreclosure. So her and my brother, like, had to go get an apartment. My dad's with his new wife. So it's uncomfortable over there. So right. it was just, it was just, it was a weird, weird time for me, bro. Like, uh, and like, like I said, when I, when I moved in with my wife, bro, I felt like, I'm home. I got a home now. So gotcha. now I can really start rebuilding. Right. You know, so that was a, it was a blessing, man. Yeah. Okay. So man, you, 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 you got with her and you, you guys got married, you said? Yeah. Yeah. We ended up getting married. We got a kid. Uh, my, my youngest son, he's four years old. So, you know, we ended up getting married at city hall. And then when I was going uh, to church at St. Paul, like I got a really good relationship with the pastor over there. So okay. he's like, so when you gonna get married? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean I'm married already? Like, nah, when you gonna get married for real? <laughs> <laughs> so then I was just like, like, man, Father Mike, I'm not trying to have no big old wedding, man. Right. Like, I'm like, look, if you open the church for me, like on a Wednesday evening, I'm, I'm bring like 10 people. And if you're willing to come and just marry us real quick, like we'll do it like that. And he's like, all right, when you want, what day you want to get married? So I picked the date, you know, we showed up. Showed up about 10 deep, you know? No so way. he married us. Then we went to have like a small dinner afterwards. Right, right. And now we're married through the church as well. So Oh, nice, nice, man. Yeah. That's good, man. <laughs> yeah, me, I've only done the city hall, man. Now you can put me on the spot, man. I hope my <laughs> wife don't hear this, you know? Yeah, you got to go, to... go handle that. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 definitely, man. So so, so, so uh, uh, from marriage, what, 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 I know you mentioned when you were in there, you said there are certain things you wanted to change about yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, um. Did, did you begin to uh, apply those things now, like, um, or like, I guess what 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 changed? You know, you got married, and what what um uh, what 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 the the direction did your life take now? You know? Yeah, I I didn't realize how many people I was that I hurt before, okay. like emotionally. You know, I was you know back then when you're younger, like having being with multiple women was like you know glorified and. And I never, I never really considered like what I was doing to the people that I was with for selfish reasons. Like emotionally, it wasn't until like, you know, somebody ended up leaving me uh, because of the, you know, because I'm locked up that I seen what that felt like. Gotcha. And I was like, it never even crossed my mind, bro. Like, damn, I probably made other, these other women feel like how I'm feeling. Like they had feelings for me and I would just like cut them off, you know, and move on to the next one and I was just like I don't never want to make nobody feel like that like I never want to make nobody feel the way this feels you right. know intentionally like that's not right you know and then just the way you tr like 
just treat the way you treat people and and the way you handle things like you know just just grew up handling stuff like just handling stuff like the street way whether you know like intimidation violence or whatever and i just knew that i could that couldn't be me no more like i can't i'm, I'm gonna end up back in jail right like if somebody say, like disrespects me or whatever like i can't go upside their head you know? right like, right they got i can't handle things that way no more so I got to figure out like how to not even put myself in those positions. And even if I'm in them, them positions, like I got to learn how to walk away yeah. and swallow my pride and who cares if people think I'm a pussy. Like, yeah, yeah. It's not about that no more. Right. Like I got to be home. Like if I, if I do one more bit, I'm going to lose my family for real. Yeah. You know, my kids and it's over with, you know, they're going to be adults living their own lives and I might never get a chance to like build the relationship with them again. And so that was more important to me than any type of prideful situation. So, and jail's humbling, bro. Yeah. It's humbling. Like when you come out, again, like I was living good when I left and I came home to nothing. Nothing, bro. Like I think I had like $200 on me that I had right. saved when I was locked up. And then I was working as a janitor, bro, making like $9 an hour and, and you know, catching the bus to work and, and then when I got a job to where, like, the bus didn't run to, I had to, like, ask my dad if I could borrow. He had an old-ass Astro van that he had parked in front of the house. Like, hey, does that van work? He's like, yeah. <laughs> like, let me use it. And the way people see me from yeah. from before, they're, how they're looking at me, like, damn, like, Dre fell off. Yeah. And that that humbles you. Yeah. Because they kind of know who, like, you used to be. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like. I see that look. I know what that look means. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, they're, right. Because they're still in the life, you know, yeah, and yeah. they're still in, 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 like, in their nice car or whatever. And and uh, it takes a lot for you not to care about right. what they yeah. think. And But jail took all that away, bro. Like, man, I don't even care what they think, bro. I'm right. just trying to survive. Yeah. Like, I'm just trying to make it. Like, I don't care. It doesn't, I don't, nobody was worried about me for 10 years, so I'm not, I don't care what yeah. they think about me no more, you know, so doesn't matter what they think about me doesn't matter at all right definitely you know? man yeah that definitely changes your mindset too towards them and like man you 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 begin to see like who's real who's not and what's worth it or not yeah you know so so you get out now that i know you mentioned making like nine dollars an hour it, it never like let's say when these guys you see, still see them you know with their nice stuff money that they ever like come at you like hey man let, let, me, let me help you out i know you're struggling or <laughs> yeah bro you know, trying to bring you back in i guess in a sense yeah, so, so uh, you know, being in being locked up for so long, you've seen people, like, leave and come back. And I used to always, I, I used to be, like, super judgmental, bro. Like, man, you stupid as hell, bro. Like, you leave, you got to leave here and then you back? Like, bro, you're tripping. Like, you got to be crazy. When I came home, I'm like, nah, I understand. Yeah. Like, I understand why. Because it's just, it feels like there's no other way. You can't make it. No. Nope can't make it just doing you know especially when you don't have no support so there was a friend of mine that you know he approached me and he was like man dre and this is weird bro because it's like it's like you get tested yeah right i had a friend of mine that uh he's still kind of in the life or whatever and he used to pick me up take me to go grab something to eat you know, he even bought me some clothes when I came home. And he was doing all right for himself, but he's doing street shit. And uh, he just mentions it. He just mentions it, like, not towards me, but he's telling me about a situation. He's in, like, man, this dude owes me some money, man. And he's trying to play me. He's trying to pay me with some, like, some some black tar, like some heroin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but the tar stuff, not the powder, like. And, uh. And I'm like, man, I don't want that. I don't even know who needs that, this, that, and the other. And he's just like, just yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like just breaking down what's going on in this day, you know? So then I got a friend, another friend that I ended up, you know, bumping into. And uh, I ended up coming over his house. And then he's talking and he's like, man, Dre, you know, like, he had just came home a few years earlier. Okay. And he's like, man, he still had a good relationship with his connect. And this connect, he's like, man, I'm about to get some work from him. And uh, and he's like, man, Dre, you know, I got a mean whip game. Like, I know how to, like, I know how to whip this stuff up. Man, if I knew somebody that had some black tar, bro, 
oh, I'll be on. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> so he starts telling me how like, he can break down one brick and turn it into like three or something and some crazy, right? And make like triple the profit. Yeah, yeah. So then I told him, I was like, because again, I was like, I was, I was in a bad spot, you know, like I can't, I couldn't support myself and I'm in the halfway house still like, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to, I'm going to ask the halfway house people if I could stay longer because it's like, I don't got really know where to go where I know oh, yeah. I'm not going to get kicked out or right. I, I can't afford the rent. So then he, I'm like, what do you mean? And then he's like, he tells me, I was like, man, I, I might, I might know somebody that got some. Man, what his eyes lit up, Dre, bro. Like, man, make it happen. Like, we'll be straight, and we ain't gotta do this for a long time. We'll set a number, bro. We reach that number, we'll stop. <laughs> like, man, what's the number, Dre? Tell me the number right now. Hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. And I was like, damn. How long would it take us to make that much money? He's like, bro, we can make that like in a month. And I'm thinking to myself, man, with a hundred thousand dollars. I can go get my apartment. Yeah. I go get my car. You know, I can put furniture in that apartment. Like, I'll be okay. I'll have some breathing room. So then I'm thinking, like, all right, well, let me see, man. I'm thinking about it. So now he's like, man, Dre, hell yeah, bro. We're going to be straight. This, that, and the other. He's painting the, he's painting the pretty yeah, picture yeah. for me. So at this time, my, my daughter's working a, she's working a job at a grocery store. And I used to, like, pick her up and, you know, again, just trying to bond with her again. I'm like, man, what time you get off work? Me, I'll pick you up. And that was kind of like my job for the week, picking her up from work. And and uh, I'm telling her, I'm having a conversation with her on the drive home how, like, man, you know, life's not fair, man. Like, <laughs> I'm here, I'm, like, going to work every day, trying to do the right thing. You know, like, this almost sounds cliche, bro, but, like, going to work, you're doing the right thing. And can't even make it it feels like i'm drowning and you know i seen this guy at the light the other day that i used to know and and he's living good and i know he's doing everything you're not supposed to be doing and and then she kind of like got like a scared look in her face and she told me she's like she's like you're not gonna do that again are you and then she's i'm like i'm like no nah. and then she's like man you ain't gotta do that like I, i'll take care of you she like, don't, uh, don't worry about it. Like, even when you get old, like, I'll take care of you. Mm. And then she just, like, reached over, bro, and hugged me. And, like, we hadn't even had that type of, like, that, you know, like. Yeah. And it was just, bro, it was just, like, overwhelming, bro. Like, she didn't want to see me. She didn't want to lose me again. Yeah. Even though we were still trying to build. So when I'm having this conversation with my friend, I completely forgot about that conversation with my daughter. So here I am contemplating, bro, for like a whole day. And I'm just, you know, pros and cons. Yeah. And it's like, and then it hit me, bro, like, damn, my daughter, bro. Call my guy, like, hey, that shit's dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude said he got rid of it. Right. And I, I didn't make that move, bro. And, you know, one of the best choices I've ever made. Yeah. All right, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You know, God has a way of using even a moment like that. Yeah, you know, from your daughter, like maybe somebody else wouldn't have been able to reach you, but just man, her. Yeah, like you mentioned, maybe the relationship wasn't as close before that moment. Yeah, but I'm sure that just that man, her, maybe seeing something in your eye or hearing something in your voice. So like, yeah. man, it sounds like he's he's thinking about doing this. So and yeah. man, that thank God for that moment. Now you 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 want to share like a. Like maybe let, let's fast forward to to what you're doing now. You, you want to share how, how you got into to what you're doing now? Like what, what what was those first steps? I guess. So, bro, like I ended up doing uh, I was doing Uber. Okay. You know that was like a whole another little story, but I ended up doing Uber because I figured it was more than. First of all, I didn't I didn't know that you could do it, but I seen somebody I was locked up with with an Uber sticker in his car, and I was okay. like, damn, bro, you could do Uber. He's like, yeah, man, you know, they just go off your, your conviction date, not your release date, and they only go back seven years. So, okay, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, so next thing you know, I was like, I need to go get a car to do Uber. Like, it's right. like got to be a newer car. I couldn't use the Astro van. <laughs> so uh, I started doing Uber, and 
It paid way better, you know, than where I was at. So one day, I get an address, and the address looks familiar. I was like, where the fuck? Where do I know this address from, man? So I'm getting closer. I pull up to the building. It's the halfway house that I was staying oh, no at way. before. <laughs> so then there's this big dude that gets into my car. And I see where he's going. He's going to Little Village. And he's coming probably to see his probation officer here or something. I'm like, so when you're in the feds, you kind of get, you hear about who's over at this joint. Who's, okay. hey, who's over there from, from Chicago? Because yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. with the feds, is your people, you're with people from all over the country. So you know all the Chicago guys kind of like, oh, yeah, there's two SDs in Wisconsin yeah, yeah, over yeah. there. Uh, there's there's another, some more SDs in Terre Haute. Uh, there's no Kings. Yeah, there's, there's such and such from Little Village, such and such from Humboldt Park. Uh, so I always heard about this guy named Tiny. And Tiny wasn't a tiny guy. Yeah, tiny yeah, yeah. big guy, you know. So yep. uh, he was in Greenville. And I was his brother was, was in Minnesota with me. Uh, but I never got to meet him personally. Just like pretty sure like I heard about the guys over there, they heard about who was over. Yeah, yeah. So then I seen the uh the address and we're driving and I was just like, Hey, what is this place? Just wanted to see like if he wanted to because maybe he didn't want, you know, people to know. Yeah. So I kinda like let him tell me, Oh, this but he was open. He's like, Oh, this is the halfway house, bro. You know, I was in the joint, this, that, and the other. And I was like, Hey, you got a brother named such and such? And he looked at me like, Yeah, how you know? I'm like, bro, I was, I was in Sandstone with him. This, that, and other. So he looked, oh, damn, for real? And I tell my wife, like, everybody that was locked up together, it doesn't matter what gang you were in. Yeah, yeah. It's like when you get out, it almost seems like everybody's kind of rooting for each other. Yeah. Because you shared that experience yep. together and you know what you, everybody, you know what, like, if he gets out next week, I know kind of got an idea what he's going through. Yeah. So I want to see him make it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah, yeah. I know it's rough. Uh. So he was right away like, man, you know, uh, my brother runs this this violence prevention program in Little Village, and he's the supervisor. And they just got a grant, bro, and they need somebody to work in the SD's neighborhood. And they don't got nobody over there. And I had just seen the, the video of his brother, Benny and George. Okay. I seen the video that the, the Tribune did like a small documentary on him. And I had seen it on Facebook like a right. few like a few weeks earlier. So when he told me, I was kind of familiar with what he was talking about. And I remember when I seen that video, I'm like, man, that's dope, bro. Like I yeah. like I, I'm like I like what they're doing, you know, like uh I liked it. I like yeah, what yeah. I seen. So when he told me, I was like, Oh, for real? He's like, Yeah, yeah, man. He, uh, here's my brother's number. Call him. Tell him I told you to call him. And so then I was just like, all right, man, you know, like, I'll give him a call, you know, just keep my options open, see what's right, going right. on. And uh, so I ended up calling him. He ended up calling me, calling me in. I, you know, I, I did the interview. I ended up getting hired, bro. And so I got hired, like, on a Wednesday. No, no was that through New, New Life New Centers? Life, New Life Centers, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got hired on a Wednesday. I got the job offer on Wednesday. They're like, yeah, just let us know if you accept or not by Monday. So now I'm on the fence, like, man, do I really want to go back in the neighborhood? Because I'm going to have to, you know, my job was going to be to, like, engage the youngsters that are yeah. gang involved. So since I've been out, I've been kind of trying to avoid the neighborhood. Yeah. Now I got to dive in. Yeah. So I'm kind of, like, weighing it, right? And I'm at my friend's house, the one I, I told you I was met at the other New Life. On, on North, the, oh, the, right, right. My uh, friend that side. I went to high school with. Yeah. And, and we used to have a lot of conversations, bro. And, and you know, like, I do real estate too. You okay. Know, I, would, I had just got back into real estate. I was doing an investment project. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, eventually, if things go as planned, eventually I'm going to be okay financially, right? This, this I should be on my way where I'm, I'm, I'm going to be okay. But then it hit me again. Like, I know I didn't go through everything that I went through just to come home and do real estate. Gotcha. Because I was doing real estate even before I got locked up. Uh, so then I was like, I had I had told him, I had told him, I was like, man, you know what I've been praying for, bro? I've been asking God to like, man, give me a purpose. Like, what's my purpose? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? And what's my gifts? Like, everybody has a gift, bro. Like, this guy's, good mechanic, this guy's could draw good, you know, this guy, man, what do I do? Like, 
I don't know what my gift is. You know, right. like, I don't have no gift, man. Like, maybe like, let me learn one or something. Yeah, yeah. So then I had told them that, uh, that I wanted to, wanted to, you know, uh, that I was thinking about uh, working over there. But then I was like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I want to take the job, man. So then he's like, bro, what are you talking about? Man, just last week you were telling me, like, you were asking God for a purpose, man. Well, this is him answering you, bro. Like, bro, go over there and pour into them shorties, man. Like, and don't worry about that other stuff, bro. Like, you're protected. Amen. And then I was like, I'm like, all right. And then when I left, I was just like, man, yeah, I still don't know, man. Yeah. You know, I still don't know. Because, again, it's just like I know what I'm going to have, what I'm going to be dealing with, right? These little wild ass shorties that don't care about who I am. And right. Yeah, I come trying to with some positive stuff. And and yeah, I'm from the same neighborhood. They don't know me. Like right. I'm an old head and they probably never even heard of me. And, yeah. and so again, this is how God works, bro. It's like early Friday morning. I just did an Uber ride downtown. I dropped somebody off like on Jackson in Michigan. So I'm parked. Waiting to see like who's gonna call me next. Right, right. And a car, a Jeep, turns the corner fast, bro, and smashes into my car. Wrecks my car while I'm parked. Get out of here. So now it's like you don't got a choice. You got to go take that job because you need a job because you can't do Uber without a car. And I was just like, I'm like, all right, all right, God, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, first so, you- so even in the midst of that, you see the, the positive, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, I guess you want me to go work over there, you know? So, and then I'm like, I'll go work for a couple of weeks. And if I don't like it, my car should be ready in two weeks or in a week or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And if I don't like it, I'll just go do Uber again. So I still got like an exit. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I took it to like the worst body shop. They took like two months with my car because even when I started the job, like I was still like, it was a little nerve wracking. Like, yeah. damn, man, like. The first few weeks, like, you just shadowed, like, I just shadowed, like, Benny and George yeah. to see what they do and get the idea. Uh, is that a li- li- little a village? Little what village. they were doing? Okay, right. A little village, bro. So, no, I, And how was that for you, like, being out there? Because I know, like, growing up where you grew up at, that's, like, the uh, opposite neighborhood, right, where you're hanging yeah. out now. <laughs> so I tell people all the time about that experience, right? It was crazy because, you know, people talk about, like, the boundaries, right? Yeah. And if you're not from Chicago or if you're not really, like, in that life, you you don't understand like how real those boundaries are, and those boundaries were real for me. Yeah, I didn't go over there. Again, I I wasn't the type of guy that just go like looking for trouble. Right, right. Because you don't have to in Chicago. Like trouble's gonna find you. Yeah. You know, so you don't need to go look for right, it. Right, right. So I never, I never been inside those neighborhoods before, yeah. ever in my life. So now, when I'm shadowing Benny, like you know, one day I'm with Benny, so we're like over by the Latin Kings and. We're in the car, and then we know he's driving me through, like, Drake and Trumbull. And <laughs> then one one time we had to, like, pull over, and we had to go, like, to one of the shorties' cribs or whatever. And they're like, all right, cool. Like, and he parked the car, and he gets out. And I was like, and I just stood in the car. <laughs> he's like, come on, bro. Like, yeah. we got to, you know, and I was like, oh, you want me to get out? <laughs> bro, it felt crazy. I yeah. stepped. I'm just, I remember like looking at the sidewalk, like I never stepped on this sidewalk yeah, yeah, before, yeah. ever. I got you. And then the same thing happened. The next day I'm over with George by the 2-6. Right. Same thing. He got me like walking around where I'm like, and George liked to walk around even more than Benny. So I'm just like, hope nobody recognizes yeah, me. But yeah, I'm yeah. like, it's like, I haven't, I, first of all, right. I never came over here. And then yeah, yeah. I ain't been home in, you know, over 10 years. So right, like, right. I was tripping, but but, but, but still, you know, it's funny because when you got here, I know I joked around about having PTSD in certain neighborhoods and areas, but that's one area I never went to either. Yeah. Like I knew, like, no, no, and you're talking about 26th Street, like, yeah, I, I never went past California. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I never nah, went over because you knew that, like you mentioned, it was like a boundary. Like, man, yeah, I only know. went by two, four Washington, eighteen yeah. and Cal. But I knew, like, man, never, nah, <laughs> never go over there unless you know you like you you. You gonna get you, what you're looking for. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, you definitely gonna find what you're looking for over there. You know. So you're shadowing them, and then the, what, what? What's next? So then, you know, after a few weeks, uh, it's like, all right, you know, now you're you're on your own. 
go to the neighborhood. So I think if my car would have been fixed in a week, I think I would have quit. Oh, yeah. Like, you, know, you know what? This is too uncomfortable for me. Right. So me and my friend, uh, the one I told you, you know, that I met, you know, the, my homie from high yeah, school, yeah. we always talk about how, you know, you have to be uncomfortable in order to grow. Yeah. And you know how God's going to put you in uncomfortable situations when he wants you to start growing. Amen. And how if I would have had my car, it was uncomfortable for me. I think I would have quit and I just would have went back to driving Uber. Uber, But again, I couldn't do Uber in the rental car because it wasn't my car. Right. And it took two months for them, literally two months for them to give my car back. So it gave me enough time to where like, you know, you're here. You're not going to go nowhere. Right. Like I got you here for a reason. So, you know, going to the neighborhood and just, you know, uh, reaching out to the, to the youngsters that I didn't know. Like, I had a nephew that hung around with some little knuckleheads, and that was kind of like the first person I reached out to. Like, okay. hey, man, this is what I'm trying to do, bro. You think you got, like, you know, four or five of your friends, and I don't even know what I'm really supposed to do, bro. But when we just hang out and just talk about, you know, what's going on in the neighborhood and how I can help. And, and then that's how kind of how it started. You know, I went. And I ended up going to the alternative high school in the neighborhood. Okay. And that's kind of like, you know, when once you get thrown out of school, that's where they send you, unfortunately. And all the youngsters that I was trying to reach, it's like, God gather, gathered them for me and gotcha. put them at the school. So when I got there and, you know, the principal at the time was cool enough to let me come in and talk to them, I told them straight up, I was like, hey, look, man, uh, I'm working for this place over in Little Village. They got a lot of resources and stuff for you guys over here in this side of the neighborhood. And I would like to bring them to you. I'm trying to start this program. And I just want to know, like, if you guys will help me build this program. Okay. Because uh, I can't do it without you guys. And uh, they they gave me a shot, bro. Man. They gave me a shot, man. And, and next to you know, like, you know, started building relationships and, it was a filling out process, more on their end, just to right. fill me out to see who I am. And then next thing you know, like, hey, man, my uncle knows you. <laughs> hey, my dad says he knows you. you. Used to be from over here, right? Yeah, he told me about you. And I was like, all right. So okay. <laughs> it started coming out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My background, because I, I just mentioned to him, like, I used to be right. over here, Around here yeah. back in my day. But, you know, like, and that was it. You right. know, but it's just like I'm coming here like this. And then even when I got more comfortable around them and they got comfortable around me, they used to be trying to call me folks. Hey, folks. And <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to, hey, no, look, no, bro. No, yeah. Look, I'm just letting y'all know right now, like, I'm a neutron. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what I used to be is what I used to be. Right, right. Like, I ain't on that no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So just, like, don't think that I like you calling me that. Right, right, right. You know, I'm not angry at you. I get like you're trying to be almost like showing me love kind of. Uh, right? yeah, I, yeah. I get where you're coming from, but like it's not that, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not I'm not an SD, bro. I'm coming here as me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And 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 my history is my history. I'm not running from it. I'm not hiding from it. Uh, but this is this is what I'm on, you know. Yeah, and yeah. they got it. And and it almost became it. it it became like a, a good relationship, bro, because they understood like uh I'm not with just one of your friends. I got love for you, but I'm not right. trying to fit in with you. Yeah. There's a there's a purpose of why we're meeting, getting together. Gotcha. Yeah. We're not just here to, to hang out with you and I, I want you to think I'm cool. Like, nah, like I'm trying to trying to get you guys prepared for life. Right. Because life is hard, bro. Like, and you're gonna figure it out unfortunately sooner or later. And I just want you to know that you got somebody that cares about you. Yeah. And that's gonna help you however I can. And that somebody that you can count on. And you're gonna learn that just by getting to know, know me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah. and just following through on that, bro. And and again, you know, word started spreading and you know, they started bringing their friends around and and next to you know, you know, we we connected with the with, with the youngsters over there, bro, and doing whatever we can to help them, okay. helping them find jobs, helping them get their, you know, their IDs, their license, helping them fill out resumes, giving them a right to the job interview, going with them to court. Man. Letting the you know, letting the judge know when he's he's in this you know a mentorship program and 
and just walking, trying to walk side by side with them, bro. Right, and right. Just letting them know and just coming at them from a different angle that nobody else probably could come at them with, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how, how, how long do you feel it took you to finally dig in, like to finally say, man, this is what I should be doing? Man, I think, you know, once I started building that relationship with them, right. and, and it was funny, bro. It was funny. It was like almost like perfect timing. Uh, because even though they're 17 years old, I'm damn near 40. We're both trying to build, start our life over. Right. They're just starting life because they're so young. I'm starting life again because like everything that I was before is no more. So now I'm, I'm building myself. I'm trying to figure out life. Yeah. They're 17, 18 years old trying to figure out life. So it's almost like, it almost felt like we're in this together. Yeah. Like that darkness you feel, bro, that loneliness you feel. I'm here with you, bro, because I feel the same way. And just like, just however you might need me, like, I need you too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it was good for me too. Okay. You know, and 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 I learned a lot from them. You know, I got to like learn their their environment. I never came at them like, bro, you know, you know, this how things used to be. And, yeah, yeah. you know, let me tell you how it should be out here. And then, nah, I never came at them. Like, I'm just constantly just like, learning from them, learning from them, and then just kind of like, once I'm gathering that information, I kind of got a better idea, like how can I, I can approach what they're doing, and and that's kind of like how the whole thing with Love City started. Okay. So one of them used to be, you know, I heard him rapping, and I'm thinking he's like rapping somebody else's song, I'm, you know, that's out already. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I'm like, hey, bro, like who, what song is that? It sounds decent. Uh, and he's like, oh, that's me. I'm like, what? Like, man, get out of here. He's like, yeah. I'm like, how long you been rapping? He's like, man, I've been rapping since I was like seven years old. And I'm like, man, you you bullshit. And he's like, nah, like I got a whole note notebook full of raps. And then he a few days later, he showed it to me. Right. And he, he used to hang out with my son. He was one of my okay. son's friends, you know. So from they were in school together. So he used to come over. Uh, but my son was at my son used to be at his grandma's house and so now I'm like, if you're around my son, I really need to know what you're on, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. So so then I was just like, man, you know, before before I got locked up too, like we had like a record label and everything. Like we oh, had yeah? like Do or Die signed to us. Oh, no everything. way. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember so, Do or Die. They were big back then. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I was familiar with the whole like music industry yeah. type. You know, I had a brief experience in that. So then I told man, you ever been in the studio? And he's like, no. So I was like, man... uh, I knew I knew of a guy that was doing youth mentorship through music. Okay. So he had a he had a studio that he would let the youngsters come and record. He'd record them, and for, it was free. Okay, but it was on the south side. It was on Forty Seventh to King Drive. So then I was like, "Man, I'm gonna take you to the studio." So I would take him over there. So it was pretty cool to like watch him like meet other young people from different parts of the city. Right, they're all there like trying to do something creative, and. uh so then I gave him a go, like, man, you know, if, if if you record X amount of songs, we'll pick the best one and I'll get a video done for you. So then, like, he lived up to his end of the bargain. Right. So then I was like, damn, I got to do my part now. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm going to pay somebody two, $300. Yeah. Like, I could afford that, you know. It'll hurt my pocket a little bit, but it's worth it. I just, right, right. I want to give these these guys something to, like, get into other than the negative stuff. Yeah. Uh. So then... Uh, I started calling like video producers and they want like seven hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. I'm like, I'm like, damn, bro, I don't sell drugs no more. Like, <laughs> I can't pay for that. Like, yeah, I got yeah, a regular yeah. job. Right, and, right. So then, uh, a friend of mine's dad was uh, that I knew from my mu- some music business days. He like he's doing marketing and promotion at okay. the time. So I uh, I remember him telling me how about how good the phones and the cameras were, right? And he was telling me how they shot a music video one time in Atlanta just on the fly. So then I remember I was like, I was like, I got to get this video done. Right. I can't pay for it. And I remember he told me about a video with a phone. And so I called him. So he's like, yeah, man, I, you need an iPhone. Like, I got an iPhone. You need a, a, a laptop and just bring it. I'll put the, so- the editing software. So he gave me the software. And it's like, all right, cool. Now I got to learn how to use it. Right, right. So, like I was telling you earlier about the podcast stuff, like I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and 
I ended up uh, one of my coworkers at the time at New Life. He was okay. getting, he was getting married, and you know he had a photographer and videographer. So one of my other coworker, his friend, mentioned to the to to the photographer video guy like, uh, hey, you know the, my coworker is trying to start like a digital media program and to work with the youngsters. Uh, you think you could like help him? Right. Just tea. Like, what does he need? Like, oh, he just know just trying to learn how to edit and. Yeah, tell him to call me, stop by. So I called him, you know, he gave me some tips. Every time I got stuck, because I would just go, like, on my own. I didn't want to bother him. Right. You know, he's running a business. And, I like, I know, like, I'm not trying to take no money out of your pocket because yeah. you're helping me. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, nah, you know, if I got some free time, you just come by, you know, 10 minutes, I'll just show you. So I would get stuck and I'd come. And I'm like, hey, bro, look, I got some stuck right here. I don't know what to do. And he's like, oh, look, this is how you do it. Boom, boom, boom. I'll be on my way. I'll back at it. So then we started, I started shooting the youngsters' videos. And, you know, obviously, like, they were terrible at first. And and uh, started getting better, though. Right, right. And now youngsters from other neighborhoods, because we're putting them up on YouTube. Okay. They're, like, hitting me up saying, hey, bro, can you shoot my video? I'm like, damn, for real? So now I'm working with, like, different youngsters from different neighborhoods. And, and we're doing this all for free, bro. Like, I'm oh, not no charging way. nobody, nothing. Like, I'm using it as a tool. I'm like... Like, I got a hook now. Yeah. You know, like, because now we're working on your music, whatever, but in, I really want to talk to you about life. Okay. You know, so, but it's hard to just come, hey, come here, youngster, let me yeah, talk yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, right, gotcha. You know, so now it's, it's in like the, the, the hook. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Real yeah. the man, gotcha. Yeah. So now in the midst of us shooting a video on our way to the shoot or whatever, on, our, on the drive to the studio, now we can talk about life. You know, and now they're more comfortable. They're opening up, you know telling me what's really going on with them. So now yeah. I can see, like, how what I can do for them, you know, if I could do anything. But now at least, like, I know what's going on with them. And, uh, yeah, and then that thing is just, you know, we started getting better. It's the word started getting out. Like, hey, this guy's shooting videos for free. Like, and so now I got youngsters from, like, North Lawndale, Austin, Humboldt Park, Belmont, Craig, and, you know, Brighton Park. Now they're all reaching out. You know, a lot of, young, a lot of these youngsters, they're trying to rap. Right. And so now it's just like, man, we got something here. Like we got to name it something, you know. Okay. So then I was just like, I just came up with the name like Love City. Uh, you know, I remember back in our days, like everything was love, like <laughs> D Love, Amber yeah, yeah, Love, yeah, yeah, King yeah, yeah, Love. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was just like, it's Love City. You know, yeah, that's yeah. how I looked at it. Okay. Like, like all different types of that, but now this is gonna mean something different. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool design, like the heartbeat. That's like yeah. the yeah, yeah. <laughs> So then when you know when I first told the youngsters like Love City, they're like, Man, that shit sounds weak as hell, bro. You should have named it No Love City. You know, so <laughs> Right, right. So then I was just like, Yeah, we got enough of that, bro. Oh, like, yeah, right. We need some more of this. And you know, this is what this is about. Like, yeah. Uh, like I'm down with like shooting your videos and I don't agree with most of the stuff you're saying in the song, but I'm gonna meet you halfway. You know what I'm saying? So like I'll do this for you. It's kinda like what I need, you know, I need what I need from you, you know, sometimes what I need from you is for you. You don't even know it. Like, I need you to come to school, bro. If I ask you to come to school, you just come to school. Right, right. Because now they're seeing, now the school's taking notice, you know, the alderman's taking notice, the church is taking notice. Like, damn, like this guy's actually dealing with some of the hardest people to deal with in the yeah. neighborhood. And, you know, he got a relationship with them. And, you know, so they started like, they, certain people know the value, like. right. So now, and that's kind of, I was telling them, like, look, this is what I'm going to do for you. This is what I need you to do for me. Yeah. If they're acting up in school and the principal comes and talks to me, I, I come in like, like, Mary, you know, when you need me, I got you, right? Man, well, I need something from you, bro. Yeah. What you need? Man, I need you to chill out, bro. I need you to just chill out, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, oh, but that teacher's a bitch. And, bro. I get it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I get it, but. If the dean is telling you don't be in the hallway, that's his job. You know, it's kind of his job. Right. And I know you're not feeling it. I know what you think about him personally, but that's kind of what he's supposed to do. And you're in the school, bro. Like, we're not on the block. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you mess with me, right? Like, yeah, you know, I mess with you, Dre. Like, well, that's what I need. Just chill out, bro. Just chill out for a couple of days, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's kind of how it would work, you know? And so the teachers would be like, even though they might start acting up again two, oh, three right, days right, later, right. but they know at least I was able to kind of like, at least for that, defuse the situation right. for that brief moment. And 
And, and, and at least you have like a like open door, like access, communication with these guys where, yeah. where they probably can't reach them the, like the way you're doing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, and it just ended up turning into that. And again, I was doing real estate. I went and got my real estate license when I found out that I could get it. Okay. Because uh, as long as you never had like no violent conviction, and since I never got convicted for the stuff I told you about right, before, right. and and my, my federal case was a drug conspiracy, uh, it wasn't like for fraud or nothing. I was I was able to get uh go take my real estate test. Nice. So, you know, I, I took the class, took the test. Uh, I didn't think I passed the test when I took it, but then you know they came like, hey, you passed. I'm like, oh so I got my license. I, I'm working on my first deal. I get a letter from the the, the licensing board from the Illinois state of Illinois telling me to cease and desist. And I got to come in, talk to them because of my background. So I go in there, bro, and they're grilling me. I feel like I'm back under investigation. They're asking me about it, my case. Is, is this like a panel? A panel. Yeah, you, you know what? I heard another podcast. Uh, somebody, uh, I think it was in California. Same thing happened to him. He was trying to do it, and he yeah. almost a, almost like you had to plead a case to a... Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, so they're like, it's a three-person panel. They're grilling me. They're, gr they're grilling me about my case. Uh, it says here you're moving X amount of drugs. How often were you doing that? How many times a week were you doing that? And I'm like, I wasn't prepared for those yeah. questions. I was prepared for like, what have you been doing since you come home? I was going yeah, to yeah. tell them about that. And I'm looking, I was just like, and one guy, bro, he was just like, had it in for me. Like, I don't think you understand why you're here. You're here to convince us why we should give you a license. We don't have to give you a license. And, and uh, so I don't think you're taking this serious. And then I had to explain to him, like, I got I got upset, bro. And again, I was just like, let me calm down because um, he got the upper hand on me right yeah, now. Oh yeah. So, and I was just like, I'm like, look, I'm not trying to avoid your questions. But you're asking me about some stuff that happened over 10 years ago that I don't think about anymore. So I'm trying to remember about what was going on back then so I could answer your questions. So then... I started like answering their questions and they made me step out the room and bro, I was like, Oh my God. Like I went through this whole class and took this test. I paid this money and I'm thinking like, I'm, I am mean, this is like a new opportunity for me and, and now they're going to take it from me. Right. Uh, so then they brought me back in the room. They're like, we're going to give you your license. And I was still on federal probation. Oh man. So they're like, we're not even going to put you on probation cause you're already on probation. So there was a, there was a white dude, a Latina. She was from Humboldt Park too, and this uh, this white lady. So the white lady walked me out. When I seen the Latina, I was like, "Oh, I'm good. I got somebody in my corner." Uh, the, the white lady's walking me out. She's telling me like, she didn't want to give you your license. She was opposed to it. But I told her like, "You've been doing good." And, right. And. And I'm the one that told him, like, he doesn't need to be on probation. It doesn't make any sense. He's already on right. probation. So then I was like, damn, man, she was trying to, like. Yeah. She's, you know, it was like, it's crazy. It's just like, man, it'd be, it'd be like how they say, be your own people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, they, 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 they know us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. So she, I know, I know it's a guy like that. <laughs> yeah, she said it. Like, oh, I, yeah. I know, I know the problems yeah. the gangs bring to a neighborhood, and yeah. I know you're probably part of that. So whatever. So I got my license. I ended up closing on the deal. And so now I had like some extra money at the time. And uh, I had reached my limit with the iPhone. You know, <laughs> now I'm seeing like other videographers. They got their nice cameras. Yeah. And I and I was telling my guy, bro, like, how do I, how do I make my video look like that? What do I got to do? And he's like, well, you got to get a real camera. <laughs> how much does it cost? And so... I had just uh, when like the deal I closed on, bro. Like, I'm, I'm, I think it was like seven thousand dollars commission. Okay, I spent all of it. I'm like, I want my stuff to look like that. Tell me what I need for it, my stuff to look like that. And he's like, man, how much money you got? I'm like, man, I got seven thousand dollars. Is that enough? Oh yeah, hell yeah, we get we get you started right, for right. sure. So I bought like my camera, lens, stabilizer, and lights and whatever else i needed right, you know, right. or a la i needed a better laptop because okay. the one i started with it was it wasn't powerful enough yeah, you yeah. know it was like it like froze up on me so i needed like a bigger stronger laptop right right uh 
So I, I invested, you know, uh, and obviously I had to like run it past my wife and I was just like, hey, look, now it sounds crazy, but I'm about to spend all this money on this camera right. stuff and like it's not part of our budget anyways. Like right, we weren't, right. you know, we weren't expecting, you know, this wasn't part of the plan. It's just, you know, I happened to come up on this deal. I made yeah, some yeah. extra money and and I really believe in what I'm doing. Uh, and it, it gave me an opportunity to like tap back, tap back into my creative side. Okay. That I hadn't done since I was a youngster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back to the so, beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. So it was just like. I loved everything what it was about. Like I get to be creative again, right. you know, visual. I knew everything was about these phones now, and and that was another thing that I used to ask myself. Like these, all these youngsters are on these phones. Like, how do we get into the phone to reach them? Like we're not in here, right? You know, yeah, we're doing basketball programs, softball, and all that, but there's a lot of them that aren't here. Yeah, yeah. And we're not here, so how do we get in here? So I was, I don't know how, but we got to get in there. Yeah. So then, like the whole video thing, I'm like. Man, I'm in here now. Nice. You know, like, hey, now you're seeing me. Now you're calling me, texting right. Instagram. Hey, bro, like, I'm going to shoot a video. And here's another thing that we dealt with that kind of set us apart. So obviously, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with, like, the culture here in the city with the drill music and everything. Everybody, it seems like everybody has a gun in their video. Yeah. Sometimes 10 guns in their video. So that was one thing where, like, I was already conflicted about what these youngsters were talking about in their songs, right? But again, it's like, I'm going to meet you halfway. But this is where I draw the line. Can't put no guns in the video. Oh, come on, Dre, man. Everybody puts, man, come on. Nah, bro, like, can't do it. Like, it feels kind of like everything what I'm trying to do here. Gotcha. You know, uh, I know you got guns on you. Like, I'm not okay with it, but I came and met you when you were already doing that. Right. We're trying to fix that. But I can't, like, I can't let you, I can't be a part of you encouraging you to come and wave your gun around for the whole world to see. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and my thing is like, if if you know, you know. If, you, if you're really doing that, people in the neighborhood, they already know. You don't need to like yeah, show yeah, them. Right. And so, so there was a lot of people that uh, didn't shoot with us because of that. Because once I got the camera, stuff changed people were willing to pay me now right and i'll pay you and i didn't know what to charge so i'm charging like really cheap yeah yeah and so i'm getting flooded and i was like damn now we're getting too much work like so now it's just like i think i'm charging too cheap yeah 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 <laughs> so so then we there was a lot of people that we that didn't shoot with us because of that because of the no guns but right, it's right. something that we stood on yeah yeah and i don't care like you think i'm corny or like <laughs> Whatever, bro. But old head. Nah. Yeah, yeah. you say old head earlier. I'm an old head, bro. Like, hey, that's I'm not on that, no, bro. No, but you're, you you got a different uh, path or vision that you, that you're on. You know, yeah, that. and I'm already knowing how the feds can use this if they really wanted to. Like, if they really to come oh, yeah. get you, and they see you in a video with a gun, bro, they'll play this at your sentencing. Oh yeah. You're not getting charged with this, but there's something called like mitigating factors and and uh, enhancements that they could use at sentencing. They can play this video for the judge when he's considering how much time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. You know, so on top of the time that your charge brings, he's gonna look at that and he can add on a few more years because yeah, yeah. of that. If he sees like how reckless you are out here. So I'm not gonna be a part of that. I know you probably don't understand that, but trust me, bro, like I'm doing you a favor. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so that ended up happening. And but then eventually people started getting the hint, like they already know, like Love City don't put guns in his videos. Right. They they kind of understood what the whole brand was about. Gotcha. We out here trying to show love. We're not with nothing, none of this goofy stuff out here. We're not gonna let you disrespect nobody on any video we shoot. Right. You know, you're not gonna disrespect somebody that died or go. You know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Respectfully, we're not gonna be part of that. You know. Uh. So. So then, you know, we didn't. End, we ended up like not being able to shoot with a lot of people. There was one story that. Uh, Cause now I'm assuming everybody knows, right? So one day me and my son, we show up. Remember when we showed up to the G Nizzo's house and we pulled up? <laughs> so we pull up to this, you know, we got booked for a shoot and we're on the west side. This guy's on house arrest and and we get there and the, the music's going already. Like they're having a party, like they're almost like pre-gaming to the video, yeah, yeah, try, yeah. trying to get the energy up. We walk in, bro. I swear I'm not lying to you. It must have been like 10 guys with 10 guns in there and like 
like big ass guns, choppers and guns with big old clips on them. And I looked at Dre, my son, I was like, damn, I forgot to tell him, man, like no <laughs> guns in the video. <laughs> Cause I'm thinking like yeah, everybody yeah. knows. Yeah, yeah. So then I was like, I'm like, hey bro, let me holler at you. So now I'm thinking like, man, he's in here with all these guns, all his homies. He might get mad, you know, yeah. like or, or you're, ready, you're, you're gonna shoot this video. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know, so it's like yeah. I was just like, I'm like, hey, let me holler at you. He's like, what's up, bro? I was like, hey, listen, man, like my bad, bro. Like, I don't put guns in my videos, bro. Like, I'll give you a deposit back right now. You know, I apologize, bro. That's on me. I should have I should have told you. Right. Wow, what? I'm like, yeah, bro. I can't, man, you can't. I can't do it, bro. I can't. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, man. I had every. I told everybody bring their shit to the house, man. Like, so everybody from the name brought their gun <laughs> with them, and and then like, man, I apologize, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Like I said, man, I'm gonna give your money back. I'm gonna cash at you right now. And, and he's like, no, 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 man. We gonna shoot this video. So now I'm thinking, like, bro, we like, where you going with this? Yeah. He turns around. Hey, man, everybody, put the guns up, man. No guns in the video. He's like, we're going to shoot the video, bro. I ain't going to make you come out here for nothing, bro. Okay. Like, And he honored it, bro. He respected oh, yeah. it, you know? And, and and it was just like, it was it was a memorable moment, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> And we shot a video, and, right. and he loved it. I'm like, and afterwards, I'm like, bro, you see how the video's still good, even without that? Like, And we ended up shooting more videos after that. And then I ended up getting a bunch, shooting up for videos for a bunch of his friends. And, okay. And they already knew what time it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, like, right, right. Yeah, you don't put video guns yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they like, man, the videos are still good. You okay, know? nice. Yeah. So I was just telling them like, that's where the creative part comes in. Like, right. you can still deliver that energy without that. You right. just got to get more creative, you know. So, uh, so yeah, man. You know, not, not everybody got a, a better idea of like who we are, what we're about, and how we're just trying to you know bring love to the to the city, bro. Like. You know, neighborhood by neighborhood right, and, right. and through just through through digital media. And now we're getting into films, you know. So okay. yeah, so so we're doing that now. And uh I ended up turning Love City into a nonprofit yes uh last year. Okay. Because like a lot of people from the community started like supporting what I was doing. You know, the, the alderman, the school principal, uh and the other community like leaders were just a, a Really like respected what I was doing, and right. they, they were all they all kept telling me like, "How can we help you? How can we help you? How can we help?" Because they seen like I wasn't like getting no funding from nobody, and because by this time I wasn't at New Life no more. I had okay. left. I left uh, right before I bought my camera. I had already left New Life because I was trying to do the pro I was trying to do the program there, and I guess like they didn't understand it. Yeah, they, maybe they didn't catch the vision. Yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. they didn't see it right and. And they were basically like, that's cool if you want to do that. Right. But we don't got no budget for that. Yeah, and, yeah, I got you. And uh, as long as you keep doing the work you're supposed to be doing for us. And and I'm just, you know, I ain't going to lie. I was a little frustrated. Like, man, I see the budgets y'all got. You guys could carve out a little bit. Yeah. Let me try this. And But, you know, I get it. It's, their, it's like I told my homie, like, you know, it's their house. You can't tell them how to run their house. You yeah. got to respect it. If not, you don't have to be there. Right. So I knew, like, I knew I was never gonna be a get. I knew I was never gonna get the opportunity to try it right. if I stood there. Yeah, yeah. So then I left. So now I'm like literally doing Love City on my own. And again, it, it was uncomfortable because like I'm leaving a steady paycheck to go and try this. Yeah. Because now by then we're getting booked enough to where like, you know, we're making some money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And then at the same time, St. Paul Church, the Catholic Church in Pilsen. Like, man, why don't you come work with us? Like, we don't really have no resources for you, but we can give you, like, a small salary. And I'm like, oh, that'll help, you know, because that combined with what I'm yeah, with bringing you. in over here, yeah. I can make it until I figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, and then every now and then I'm landing, like, some real estate deals, so I was like, I'll, sur I'll survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was uncomfortable because it was nothing steady, you know? It was just like, again, it's just like I got faith, like, it's going to work out. Yeah. So now uh, the the community leaders kept telling me, like, so who's funding you? Like, where are you getting money from? Because, you know, there's a lot of tons of, like, grant opportunities. And and I was like, nobody. Like, I'm doing it myself. Like, well, we got to get you some help. So, you know, uh, 
the alderman helped me connect with a few people in the neighborhood and they were like uh we need to we need to start a nonprofit. I'm like, cool, what are we gonna call it? They're like, we're gonna call it Love City. I'm like, I'm thinking I'm just gonna help them build a nonprofit yeah, yeah, for yeah. the neighborhood. And they're like, We're gonna call it Love City and you gotta be the executive director. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, like, for real, like, yeah, it has to be. It has to be what you've been doing. Right. You know? That's why we're all here. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, all right, if, like, if you guys believe in me to do it, yeah, yeah. I just ask one thing of you guys, like, if you guys are going to help me build this, I need y'all to stick around for a little bit. Don't help me build it and then go live your life. And then I don't have the experience to hold this thing together. Yeah, yeah. And it falls apart. Because I think that'll do more harm than, than us not even trying it. Yeah, yeah. Because then it'll be like, you tried and you failed. And then I was like, see, I don't even know why you tried that. You know, right, people right. Yeah, 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 are like, yeah, yeah. Man, who do you think you were trying to start something? You know, like, so then I, I told them, like, man, if you guys can commit to sticking around at least for a year or two, like, I, I, can, I catch on quick. Yeah. I know what I know. And I, most importantly, I know what I don't know. And yeah, I yeah. know how to go find somebody that does know it. Gotcha. So give me some time to, like, build my support. And at that point, I hope you guys still want to stay, but if not, like it's cool you did your part. Yeah. Uh, so then we know we 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 established a nonprofit. We started applying for grants, bro. And we got a big grant from the state last year. Uh, so we got uh, we got a grant for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, bro, to like buy all the equipment that we need to pay myself a salary to provide youth programming for the youngsters. Yeah. All the youngsters that come through a program, they get a stipend, so they get paid. So they get paid to come learn. Uh, we got money to hire instructors. We got we partnered with this theater company called Teatro Vista. Okay. So they come, you know, they're professionals. They're like the only Latino-owned uh, theater company in the city, or one of one. Of, I think there's another one, but they're one of the bigger ones. And uh, so we've been able to do some like really, really good things. Uh, and that's been, again, it's only they only funded us for a year. Okay. Uh, so now the uncomfortable part again, you know, that year's about to come up again. And, you know, so now we have to reapply. And almost it's like we had to prove yeah, yeah. what we're going to do, right? Right. So the good thing is that we just met with them last week and they love what we're doing. And they like told us uh, they don't see any reason why they wouldn't keep funding us. Gotcha. You know, so it's looking good. Nice. Uh, and again, it was just like the whole time, bro, like I know God been just guiding me, bro, because yeah. I never had any of this planned. Yeah. When I came home from jail, I never I never thought I was going to be doing real estate again. Right, I right. never thought I was going to be doing community work. I never in a million years would have thought I'd be like the executive director of a nonprofit. And now we about to dive into films yeah, my. and we're going to start like learning how to produce films and television series. And that's a big, big challenge, bro. But I seen, I seen how God's worked in my life up until this point, right. bro. So like, I'm not, a, I'm not scared to try anything. Yes. I'm just going hard, bro. And I'm telling my son, like sometimes I even get a little bit scared and nervous because I'm like, it's going to happen. Yeah. Like, I hope I'm ready. I don't know when it's going to happen. We just got to keep working. And it's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. Look at everything that's happened so far. So I don't, like, I don't, I believe it's going to happen for us, bro. I believe we're going to create, like, a whole new, almost open the doors to a whole new industry we never had access to here in Chicago. Amen. You know, L.A. and New York, you know, they, the culture, the film culture has already been there. Yeah, It's never really been here. When, you know, anytime we get highlighted, it's people that come from out of town right. to highlight what's going on here, but it's never been us, you know. You see the big trucks filming in the neighborhood all the time, but none of those people are from the neighborhood. Right. So that's the goal. That's the long-term goal. Eventually, that's going to be us pulling up in those trucks, filming, telling our own stories. Right. When I seen uh, 50 Cent was doing the story on the twins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. I, was, I was mad, like, 
I wasn't mad at 50. I was like, damn, bro, that's supposed to be us. Yeah, yeah. You know, Chicago but, telling Chicago stories. Right, gotcha, like, yeah. Yeah, so that's supposed to be us telling those stories, like, but it ain't his fault we're not in position. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, okay, we're not going to cry about it. We're going to get the work. And a few years from now, we should be in position to start making some noise and, and with this film stuff, yes. bro. So, and again, bro, it's like the heart of what we do is going to still be like the same. It's just we're doing it through film now. It's the same youngsters that are, you know, out here in the street and tell them, bro, come over here. Come over here and hold this camera, man. Yeah. Come over here and act in this scene. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I want whatever we do to feel like here, bro. Like, yeah. I want it to feel like the city. Yes. You know, I don't, I want, I want it, uh, the vocabulary to be the way we talk, the wardrobe be like the way we dress and, and really paint that real picture of what the city is like. I want the writing, the scripts to be from, from us. You know, like we, I'm not opposed to like getting help from other people and guidance, but the the final product has to be like authentic, bro. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it is going to like, it's going to be inspiring, bro, for other people to, to jump into this. Cause I know we have a lot of talent here, hey, man. you know, so I see it all the time and, and it's just getting them to getting the people to believe that it's possible. Once they believe it's possible, bro, watch out. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, sir. Yep. Man. And especially like what you said, man, guys come through, guys gotten you to this point. So it gives you more, I would say more faith yeah, to just bro. continue to push forward. And you know, there's just the beginning, right? Like in your mind. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's what makes me nervous. Like I still. And my wife said, like, why are you nervous? It's like, because I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. I know it's coming. I know he got something big planned for me, like, and I hope I'm, I do the right thing yeah. with it. Because I know, like, you know, uh, I used to listen to Joyce Meyer in the joint. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I should be saying uh, All right. different levels bring different devils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> so then I gotcha. just, like. I always try to keep myself grounded and humble yeah. not to get like too big headed or arrogant because yeah. like I already know how you know how if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing like God's going to get you right. Oh yeah. You know and I've, I've seen that firsthand. so I'm not trying to play with them. You know yes. what I'm saying? I'm just trying to do what I'm supposed to be doing and make I'm always trying to make sure my heart's in the right place and everything else he's going to take care of. He knows he knows what I want. Yeah. You know I talk to him Okay. You know, you know how these, uh, uh, this is T.D. Jakes too. He's like, when he said, uh, no, it was T.D. It was Steve Harvey. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he said, uh, you know, Pastor Steve Harvey. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. He, how he said, uh, you know, you, you ask not because, no, you have not because, because you, you ask, ask not. not. Yeah. And I heard him say that. Yeah. I, I went and had a conversation. This is what I want. Yeah. This is what I want to do. Right. I'm going to go to work. Now you know what I want. I'm going to work, and, and I know you're going to take care of that for me. Amen. And I already know it's whenever it's, whenever you decide is the yeah, time. Yeah. I, I just got to go to work every day. Yeah. You know, and, and the rest, I know you got it. You right, know? right. So then that's how I be moving, bro. Man, nice. Hey, that, that's, a, that's a good way to, to, to be moving now, man. Especially, man, there, there's nothing like, uh, I know you mentioned humility. Continue to be humble. Uh, talk to God. Praying. You yeah. know, seeking him, man. It's when in, 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 in that conversation and that prayer, I'm sure is where you get probably direction or confirmation, whether to move or not to move on something. Yeah. And that, I, I don't think there's anything that could replace that a communication with God, man. Nah, and, and it's almost scary. It's almost scary that because it's like almost everything that I ask for is happened in some shape or fashion. And sometimes you forget that you ask for it because, again, it doesn't happen right away. Yeah. Like, hey, God, I need this, and tomorrow I got no, it. Right, right. So sometimes it'll be years later, and, I, and it'll hit me like, damn, I remember I was praying for this. Yeah. I got it. And yeah. it's like, that's why I know, bro. Like, I know we're going to do something special, man. Amen. Because I prayed on it. Yes, yeah, sir. So experience tells me this is not going to be no different. You right. know, it's just going to it's gonna take some time, and whenever he's he's ready for it to be a reality, it's gonna pop off. Hey man, hey man, be there, yo. Man, hey, keep keep doing what you're doing, brother. And I know he's gonna bless Love City, and it's evident from what you're talking about. He's already using you to minister to them. And going back to what you shared, where where your friend had to remind you, hey man, you were asking God to give you purpose. Yeah, and, even uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> and here it is. It's like 
it's coming to what they say like fruition it's yeah. coming like you're getting there and i'm sure i, I can see like in, in your eyes man you get a joy yeah of the work that you're doing and like man like my my life wasn't it, it, it didn't it wasn't a waste like even right. even going through those 10 years like yeah. almost like you had to go through that yeah so that you could have that man that change you know that change your heart change your mind and now you could reach youth that you probably mm -hmm. see yourself in probably some of them right like yeah for sure no i tell people all the time it sounds crazy like it was a blessing what i went through it didn't seem like it at the time but i would have never been in the mindset i am now if i didn't go through that and so now it's like almost i'm almost grateful that i went through that and not only that it's like like i said bro i'm 45 years old and I feel as youthful, as vibrant yeah. as I've ever been in my life because I know I could just imagine what's in front of me. Yeah. And the position that, that, that God got me in right now is just, I'm so grateful. Now I get, you know, I, 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 I advocate for the community all the time, right? And for the youngsters that were like, that are living right now, how I was living. I'm always advocating for them. Like, you don't just throw them away. Right. You know, they're they're young, sometimes misguided. Sometimes they're not making the smartest choices. You're, they're 16, 17 years old. They're not even all the way. Their brain ain't even all the way developed yet. Yeah. Like, you can't, you can't just disregard them. I'm showing you what's possible for them by what I'm doing right now because I was them. Yeah. So watch me work and watch watch me show you what I'm capable of. So when you look at them, they got that in them too. Yeah. It's just they're young still. Give them some time. Yeah. I tell my homie all the time, like, when I go do, like, my real estate stuff, I'll show up, like, in some ripped jeans, some Air Force Ones, like, white T-shirt, everybody in there's like, in a suit. Yeah. And I was just like, I need them to know that people that look like this, do good business. Don't judge people that look like this and right. thinking and, and categorize them. Because I feel like when every room, every room I walk in, I'm walking in with them. They're with me. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's just me, they're in the room with me. Because if I'm in the room, they're in the room. I tell them all the time, like whatever I have access to, whatever knowledge I got, bro, is yours. Just let me know what you need and you got it. And you can't tell me you can't do it because I'm doing it. Right. And you know me, right? Your uncle said he knew me, yeah, right? Yeah. So you know what time, you know where I come from. Even though you never heard me say it, you heard other people say it. And look what I'm doing now, so why can't you do it? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's a reality, bro, and don't, let, don't ever let nobody, like, tell you otherwise. And, and, and that, that's kind of, like, the vibe and the energy I bring into the room, bro. Like, I'm, I'm really, like, I'm really representing for real. Yeah. That's how, that's how I look at it. I mean, come on, bro, like, they're, they're letting me run my own nonprofit. Yeah. You know, like, that's, that's crazy, bro. Like, who, who would have thought me? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, nah, nah, I could really tell you, like, you can really do this. Yeah. Because I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're the same person. You're just yeah, yeah. 20 years younger than me. I'm you. Fast forward 20 years, I'm you, bro. Yeah. You know, so, so, like, get to work. Yes. And if you're not ready yet, let me know when you're ready because I'm going to be right here. You know, I ain't, I ain't going nowhere, bro. God willing, you know, I'm going to be right here, hopefully in even a better position to help you, you know. So, yeah, so yeah man, that's, that's, that's how I be moving. Hey, man, hey, man. Man, hey, that, that, that's, a, that's a lot of stuff that is going on with you right now, man. And, and thank God for what you're doing, the work that you're doing. Hey, do you have any, like, final words? And maybe I always ask our, our guests if they could, like, uh, close us out in prayer as well. So, uh, my final word is, man, go visit our website. Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead, man. You <laughs> go, plug it. go visit our website, love, lovecity.org, man. If you want to support what we're doing, there's different ways to support. Obviously, like, there's a donate button out there if you want to support us financially. Uh, if you want to volunteer, kind of like if you have a skill or a talent that's in line with what we're doing through digital media, photography, you know, audio, visual, whatever, man, like, for sure, reach out. Uh, 
yeah, man, and just, you know, be on the lookout for us, you know, and help us spread the word about what we're doing, let people know, you know, the stuff that we got going on. And, uh, yeah, I'll close this out in prayer. Amen, right, amen, brother. I'm not a... Uh, Hey man, like the, you you just mentioned, you talk to God. Hey, that's the same thing you got to do, man. But just just do it, you know. Like for for those that are listening, and I know your hearts for the youth, you know, those that are out there. So just just imagine that maybe those youth that you're that you're already interacting with, there might be some out there, or even some some men. You yeah. mentioned forty five years old, fifty years old, and they think, man, my life, I messed up my life. No, no, nah, uh, you know, with, no. you know, like with God, you know that there's, yeah. you know. We got a lot of life to live, bro. Like, don't give, don't give up. Yeah, you're 40 so, years old. You don't know what you're doing. Hey, I didn't know what I was doing either. So and I just just get to work, man. So yeah, let, let me pray real quick. Uh, Father God, uh, just thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and you know share my story with this brother on this platform. You know, bless his platform. I see what he's doing out here. He has a, a positive message, and and we need more of that, Father God. And I just ask that you know that you continue to 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 protect us and, and, you know, keep guiding us and, and lighting our path. And uh, ask that you let people, you know, let people see our heart more than anything. And I continue just to, like, to ask you to, to keep us humble, you know, keep us strong, uh, keep us mentally aware, and just, you know, give us the opportunity to continue to just inspire people to just to do better and be better and just, you know, help us understand that we're all, you know, we're all human and let's all, you know, try to be good to each other. Uh, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Dre, amen. I just want to thank you for your time, man, for coming out here. And I uh, mean, God bless you, your wife, your children. You know, I mean, I, I see you even got them working, man. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I know you mentioned earlier about, man, you came out, you felt like you had no family. And now yeah. he's blessed you with your wife, with your kids. Yeah. And almost like these youth now that you're encountering. Yeah, that's it's my family, like, like bro. Family I feel now, like I got you know? a bunch of nephews now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know, yeah, hey, that, yeah. that's the blessing of the Lord and the favor of the Lord. You know, yeah, I know sure. you, you mentioned a little while ago, like, man, you know, I, I didn't see myself doing this. But, man, that's God's favor, you know. For sure. Like, man, you prayed and, yeah. and, and, and I believe he's blessing you because he sees your heart. Yeah. He sees your heart to to want to give, you know, to give back. And mm -hmm. I believe that's why all this, you know, comes to to, to people, you know. Yeah, my, my friend always tells me that, bro, you got favor. You got favor. <laughs> yeah, it's the favor of yeah. God, man. That's one thing money can't buy, the yeah, favor of God, sure. man. Yep. Hey, so with that, we're going to get ready to close out. Uh, uh, Matthew 4.16 reads, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. My name is Omar Calvillo. I am Wrong to Strong. Hey, Drake.